Hey, hey, uh, shalom, shalom, shalom. Welcome back, welcome back. The Hour Hidden History Radio. I'm Deacon Ithan, and to my left, Captain Joel. To my right, Officer Judge Rio. Uh, to the left again, <laughs> <laughs> Officer Hain. Uh, Officer right. Lacroix. Hi, um, welcome back to episode three of Hour Hidden History Radio. Um, we're going to go into some more topics. Um, some pretty important topics. I want to pretty much dive into, delve into the history of uh, the feminist movement, Christianity, which you're going to find is pretty much, uh, they go hand in hand. Um, in terms of being deceptive, in terms of being destructive towards our people, or tar targeting our people. All right, so let's go. Today's topic is entitled um, Eve of Destruction. That's twofold Eve of Destruction and the Religion of Rebellion. It'll be part one. If um, we lack the time to continue the class, so we're gonna open up with First Corinthians eleven verse one, um, because um, I've been meaning for a while to address the uh, Black Lives Matter movement, which is a uh, offshoot or a branch of a uh, political agenda that is being that is used as a front for Black rights, when it's really an, when it's really in actuality a uh, Political slash homosexual agenda being pushed at the expense of black bodies. That's what it's Black Lives Matter is really. It's about the expense is being used as a Trojan horse to institute homosexuality and broken homes, homes without black, broken black and brown people homes um, without fathers, um, moving fathers from the home. And this is not the first time we've had a movement that worked towards destroying the black home the black community all right so i'm definitely going to dub into black lives matter today because i haven't had the time to do it but I, today i'm gonna try to do it more um first corinthians 11 and verse 1 all right the book of first corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 uh -huh. be followers of me even as i also am of christ so paul said be followers of me even as i also am a follower of christ go ahead now i praise you brethren that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. Keep the ordinances as I have delivered them unto you. Go ahead. Verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So one of the things that Paul reminded us is that I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Go ahead. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is the man. Now society, of course, as you know, has taken that and made that, made, turned that into misogyny. Misogyny. Men, um, woman hatred, uh, bigotry, bias. You hear these different terminologies that are being thrown out there when it comes to the man having power or rulership or being the head of the woman. Go ahead. And the head of Christ is God. And Christ himself has a head. Has a head. His head is his father. And a woman's head is the man. And a man's head is Christ. There's an order to things. There's an order, a natural order of things. As there is in nature, so there is in mankind, in human, in, in um, humankind, okay? Men rule the world. I'm just going to be flat out with y'all. I don't give a damn what TV tells you. I don't care what the radio tells you. It is a man's world. Any privilege that women have in this world, they have because man gave it to them. Whether she's a police officer, whether she is a construction worker, whether she is an ice cream truck driver, whatever position women have of authority in this world is because man gave it to them. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove it to y'all. Because a lot of y'all on this massage, um, they're trying to make it where you can't say anything about women or men. But we're gonna, we gotta get out, we have to get out of that. We have to get out of that. You know, we're not going to um, well, us, we're not going to allow ourselves to be silenced by the media. The media um, tends to silence brothers and sisters who speak out against the abnormal, which is which is trying to be, which is being disguised as normal. All right. So let's go to um, Genesis two eighteen. So Paul established the order. We're going to find out where Paul got the order from. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. All right. Watch this. The book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. And the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. So the Lord said, it's not good that man should be alone. Go ahead. I will make him and help meet for him. I will make him and help suitable for him. Jump to verse 20 to 24. Verse 20, and Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for now, him. Now, I'll give a bit more detail regarding Adam in um, last episode, but it says um, the Lord gave Adam a place to live and he gave Adam a job, which is um, as, as a husbandman or a farmer. 
Then he also gave Adam another job naming the animals. The, the Most High gave Adam wisdom, power. That's what we're going to read. All right. So it says, and, and Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowl of the air and every beast of the field. But for Adam, go ahead. But for Adam, there was not found and help meat for him. There was not found and help meat for him. Animals had their animals had their female counterparts. The sheep had the female sheep. The beast had the female beast. Okay. But Adam didn't have a, a, um, a female counterpart of his own as of yet. Go ahead. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman mm -hmm. and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. She should be called woman. So Adam said, she shall be called woman because she came out of me or she is of me. Go ahead. Because she was taken out of man. So Adam named all the animals and Adam named his female counterpart a woman. So the term woman came from who? A man. Came from men. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they shall become one again. Once they get married, that symbolizes you becoming one again because she was taken out of him. And once they became man and wife, you become one again because she is one of bone of your bone, bone of your bones, flesh of your flesh. That symbolizes marriage. That's what marriage is about. The union of man and woman because woman once came out of man. And when they come back together in marriage, they're formed as one once again. So there's no, so God didn't pull a man out of Adam. God didn't pull a woman out of Eve. That's not relationship. That ain't biblical. But Black Lives Matter is pushing something different from what God has established since the beginning of time. God gave man and women reproductive organs. Reproductive organs. What, what, for what purpose? To reproduce. Man cannot produce a man. Woman cannot produce a woman. So that is not the natural order of things. It's not a hatred thing or I'm afraid of homosexuals. No, 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 no. Because y'all try to hide behind those, those, those words. Oh, they're afraid. They are, you're homophobic. No, no, no. No, no. I'm gotophobic, not homophobic. I do deal with the natural order of things. But the world, the, the nation that runs over, rules this world, he deals with the unnatural order of things. And then he, and then our people who've been here for, for the past, going on 400 years, past 400 years, who've been colonized and enslaved, we're slowly beginning to integrate or to assimilate into the mindset of our own, of our oppressors here in America and other parts of the world. Primarily the Western world, primarily the European world being Europeanized. In the time of the Greeks, it was called Hellenized. <coughs> okay. In the modern sense, it's referred to as assimilation. All right. So now, Let's get um wisdom. Of, no, let's get First Timothy two eleven. We're gonna be to verse thirteen. First Timothy two eleven. We're gonna be to verse thirteen. The book of First Timothy chapter two verse eleven. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man. So now you read that. Some of you women women watching right now. You're like, oh, see, this is chauvinist. That's another term I use, chauvinist. Why, why women got to be quiet for? Because y'all got big mouths. Mm -hmm. The black woman got the biggest mouth on the earth. Mm -hmm. There's no bigger mouth than a black woman's mouth. Say what? There's no, <laughs> there's no bigger <laughs> mouth than a black woman's mouth. None. Y'all you, y'all surpass every mouth on the earth. <laughs> Period. And it's not, it's not hatred because I, I was raised by it. So I'm not saying I, that it's out of hatred or I hate women, I hate black women. No, no, no. But we were a lot of us were raised by big mouth grandmothers and mothers. D. Yeah. Hey, I love my mother dearly, man. But when you when we used to do something, me and my brother would do something wrong. We would beg her, just beat us, just stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> the talking, the tongue lashing was worse. Right, it was than the actual beating. We was mm -hmm. like, just beat me and get it over with. <laughs> right, get, get it over with exactly. So understand that. As, as a people, um, especially black and brown people, black and Hispanics, regardless of your shade or whatever, blacks, whatever, in those communities, black and, in the black and Hispanic communities, you're going to have a big mouth mother, whether it be abu your, your abuela, your, your grandmother, your auntie. There's always that mouth in the house that, that scares the hell out of everybody in the house. It's just, it's just there. So Paul dealt with that same, that spirit has been in our women for a long time. 
And Paul was, ad was addressing it in his, letter to Tim in his letter through Timothy. Read on. Verse 13. For Adam was formed, was, was first formed. Now read verse 11 again from the top, real quick. Verse 11. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. With all subjection, go ahead. But I suffer not a woman to teach. Because the women at this time were trying to exalt themselves above the men. They were trying to be the leaders and lead the men in this time. So Paul was checking them. Paul was checking them. Go ahead. Nor to usurp authority over the man. Nor to what? To usurp, uh, usurp authority over the man. Nor to usurp authority, nor to usurp authority over the man. That's, that's, what, well, that's why Paul is saying, keep silence and learn in subjection. Because they were trying to usurp authority over mm. the men. Go ahead. But to be in silence. But to be quiet. Don't run your mouth. Be, be respectful. Go ahead. Watch this. For Adam was first formed. So now he's explaining why the, the, the woman is to be subject to the man. For Adam was first formed. Go ahead. Then Eve. Then Eve came. Go ahead. And Adam was not deceived. And hold, on, hold, on, hold on a second. Don't jump ahead. <laughs> yeah. Hold on to that. Let's get what's the Psalm in 10. But Adam was first formed, then Eve. Because Eve came where? She came out of Adam. That's what made her a woman. Her being taken out of man. Adam was first. That's the order. That's the natural order of things. Man first, woman second. Now, we're not saying that the man is a step on top of the woman and she'd be a footstool. No. She was a help meet. She was a, a partner. She was his partner. They were, they, they were one flesh. His wife, his support system. His supporter. Wisdom of Solomon 10 and verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon 10, verse 1. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 10, verse 1. She preserved the first formed father of the world. She is referring to wisdom because she represents the most high first to wisdom as a she because wisdom to us will be a comfort. She is a, 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 um, a, um, a, a, re a pillar of rest to us, a support. Okay, so the, the wisdom is oftentimes referred to as by so Solomon as a woman. She gives us comfort. She gives us love in times of grief and so on and so forth. So he's me metaphorically speaking of wisdom as a woman. Read again. She preserved the first formed father of the world. She wisdom preserved the first formed father <clears throat> of the world. Adam was the first man ever made. He made Adam first and he made Adam first and, uh, and alone. Then he made other Adams after that one. And, but they had women. But the first Adam he made, the alpha, I call him the alpha Adam, was alone. And that Adam was the one that he was, that, that, that Adam was the one that was given wisdom. Go ahead. That was created alone and brought him out of his fall. And brought him out of his fall. Go ahead. Verse uh, 2. Verse 2. And gave him power to rule all things. And gave him power to rule all things. Gave Adam power to rule all things. That's why he gave Adam the power to name the animals. And when you read, um, and um, Adam was also the one that all the other people around at the time sought wisdom out, sought wisdom from. The same way you had King Solomon in First Kings chapter four, all the nations came to him for wisdom. The same thing in the Garden of Eden with Adam. All the nations came to Adam for wisdom. Adam was the God on the earth. Adam was a God on earth. That's what that's what the Lord said here. Here's the fish. Here's the birds. Here's the cattle. What you gonna name them? Because He gave Adam the wisdom. To, have, to be able to name the animals. So a lot of the animals that we call birds today, Adam called it bird. We call it a whale, Adam named it a whale. We call them fish, Adam said, that's a fish. That's a bird. That's a lion. That's a bear. Because Adam had the wisdom to do these things. So the, so the nations would say, what's this? That's a lion. Okay, lion. Adam was a god on the earth. Everyone sought to Adam for wisdom. All right? He was a god on the earth. Ver, um, read verse... Reverse two already. Reverse two again. And gave him power to rule all things. And gave him power to rule all things. Adam had power to rule all things. Now let's get Genesis three now. Genesis three verse one. The book of Genesis chapter three verse one. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So this serpent was more subtle than any, than any beast in the field. And he said unto her, Ye shall not... Wait, wait, read again, read again. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, mm -hmm. which the Lord God had made. Yep. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? So he's questioning her. He's saying to Eve, Did, 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 did God say to you, You can't eat of every tree of the garden? 
Now she knew obviously the answer. He knew the answer was yes. But go ahead. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Because Adam taught that. Go ahead. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So she understood right from wrong. She understood not the things she could do and things she could not do. Go ahead. Based upon Adam's instruction. Go ahead. Verse 4. We're going to read the verse 5. Go ahead. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. But, so the devil said to the woman, if you eat of that tree, you won't die. Who told you that? Now, she just told him that they would. Satan said, no, that's not true. That's not true at all. Go ahead. Verse 5. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. You'll be enlightened. You'll gain wisdom. Go ahead. And ye shall be as gods. You and Adam shall be as gods. You and Adam shall rule all things because you'll have the same amount of wisdom that your husband has. Because Adam knew everything. Well, most things. But he said, you, Eve, can be just like your husband. You could be a goddess. You can be a diva. You can be equal to your man. Have power with your man. Because when you examine the Black Lives Matter movement, this whole Me Too thing, <laughs> it's about women privilege. See, women don't want the, 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 the positives and negatives of man. They just want the positives. They want all the, the high paying <laughs> positions. They don't want to get killed by the police. They don't want that. Kill me, kill me too. Yeah, shoot me. Yeah, put your knee in my neck also. That's not fair. Why, don't he, why are you only killing him? See, I ain't asking for that. Y'all want the high positions and all that stuff. Y'all want to be the boss, the diva. Boss bitch. That's what y'all call yourselves, right? The boss bees. Right? Bougie. Sassy. Like, like what's her name be saying? Uh, what's that girl name? Megan Thee Stallion, that song. That's a hit now. Sassy, bougie. That's, 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 that's cute to y'all. That's, that's cute. That's adorable to y'all. To y'all. Y'all want privileges in terms of equality with men. Y'all want to be gods too. That, the, uh, Esau, not Esau. Satan introduced, well, I'll get to that, but Satan introduced <laughs> feminism to the woman. This is the time he first introduced it. Adam, said, Adam told you what? You'll die. Who said that? No, that's not true. You see, God knows <laughs> if you eat of that tree that Adam said you can't eat from, you'll be wise. See, he don't want you to be, he don't want you to be wise like Adam is. But if you do eat well, um, from this tree, you'll be just as wise as Adam. You'll be equally powerful as Adam. This was a Satan selling her. And she's like, hmm, that sounds good. Read on. Knowing good and evil. So you'll know good and evil. Now, remember, before this, all he knew was good. But he said, if you learn evil also, You'll be just like Adam. You'll be gods. You'll be a diva. You'll be a goddess. You'll be a queen. And she said, yeah, I like how that sounds. Like y'all like to hear it today. Your Beyonce's, your Nicki Minaj's, your Cardi B's, your Megan Thee Stallion's, your Oprah's. Y'all admire and worship these women to a high, it's to a high standard. Because the so-called white man exalts them to that high standard. And Deacon, uh -huh. Go ahead. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's always during these um, Edomite ruler empires. You know, as, um, Paul speaking of mainly it's during the time of Rome. And that issue always rises up when Esau infiltrates the minds of our women because right. it's within Esau's nature. You look at Esau's gods. When you look at what a person worships, you kind of know what they're about. Yep. When you look at Esau's gods, you have Diana, Aphrodite, you have um, yeah. the that'd queen be, of heaven. That'd be Wonder Woman. Diana of, the, Diana of the Ephesians, right? So almost everything is based upon woman power. Mm -hmm. So, but Esau, he, he has that philosophy, but he keeps his woman in check because he understands that if he gives the woman power, it's going gonna, it's gonna to diminish everything that he's trying to establish. Right. But what he does, he takes his philosophy, say, you know what? I know I have this thought in my mind, but I'm going to put that on a black woman because I know if I put that same thought within a black a woman... It's going to de 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 allow her to destroy the nucleus family. Right, because he, he gives the, the, the woman, the white man gives the woman, America gives the woman a false sense of authority. It's not real authority. Because realistically speaking, y'all don't really have power over no men. There's nowhere in the world you can think of where women have complete and total domination over men. Nowhere. It's a false sense of authority. It's not real authority. Either she, whether she's a CEO or a supervisor she don't really own the business. She supervises the business. She has a high position in a business owned by or run by a man. 
You understand? So it's a, it's not real authority. Just like the authority Eve sought for wasn't real authority either. Because Satan introduced that to her. But that was a trick to what? To get her to what? Go against, to rebel against Adam. So, it, so this is the first. What Satan did was Satan attacked a marriage. Mm -hmm. Satan basically disrupted the nuclear family. Adam and Eve were a family, a couple. And Satan disrupted that. And that caused a ripple effect that brought death into the world. And, they, and also, this is what, what, why we get the LGBT movement. Yep, today. yep. And that's the same thing they're doing. Yep. And that's why the women think that she's, there's a 50-50 equality with mm -hmm. the men. And that's, that's, not, that's not true because it doesn't matter what the, the female thinks they could do. Or you see they'll do um, weightlifting. Or because the men do it, I could do it too. But you can you can pregnant... Uh, another woman, and that's why Esau is trying to do it by um, doing with the with the transgender, mm -hmm. having the 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 female uh, that turns to a male get <coughs> pregnant, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden now, oh, my husband is pregnant. Now that's a female, right? You know what I'm saying? That's a female. It's not a male, mm -hmm. but he tricked their mind the same way, like you said, they, um, he tricked Eve in the garden. Right now, she's still doing the same thing now today. Right. So that covenant is still in effect mm -hmm. right now. In America, I brought out last week. America worships Egypt. America worships Egypt, and Egypt was one of the first dark nations, particularly to deify women as gods, deify women as gods, and make it more so of a matriarchal uh, supremacy. But even in that instance, even when they deified the women, like they had ISIS and so forth, even when they worshipped the women, the pharaohs were still the ones in authority. You had female pharaohs, but female pharaohs were daughters of male pharaohs. So even when you had queens of Egypt, they were co-regents to their brothers or they were the co-regents to their fathers. The, the males still had dominance in Egypt, despite female pharaohs you can name you can count on maybe one hand female pharaohs because that the, the, the main ones you read about um uh, po most popular is nepatiti and the cleopatra and cleopatra was white mm -hmm. that was a daughter of a greek of, of the ptolemaic dynasty the greeks took over egypt and they whitewashed egypt and made the egyptian gods their gods then the roman gods the romans borrowed the um Took the well, the Romans pretty much took the Greek gods and merged them into their own and gave them Latin names. Okay, because Diana is Isis. Isis goes back to Semiramis. <coughs> Semiramis goes back to Nimrod's mother slash wife of that madness. But the bottom line is that Egypt were, were one of the one, one of the main nations after Babylon that pretty much well no yeah, after Babylon that or during whatever that pretty much made the woman a goddess that deified the woman and made her a goddess. Babylon did too. They had uh, Summer Dama, she became uh, Venus. She became, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Isis. She became uh, uh, the Hathor. I forgot different names, but it's all the same woman. The same pagan trinity has been, has been passed down to different, to different um, nations up until Christianity. Ashtoreth, Ishtar. Ashtoreth, thank you. Ashtoreth, Ishtar, Ishtar. Ishtar, right. That's all the same woman. Isis, all the same woman. Diana. Diana, same Aphrodite. thing. Aphrodite. Right, Aphrodite's Her Hera, Gaia, Queen of Mother, heaven, Queen of heaven. heaven, Mother Earth, it's the same. Nature. It's, Mother Nature, it's all the same. All the same. All of that was all a false sense or false ideology of woman dominance. Women do not run the world. You never will run the world, ever. I'm going to tell you to your face. Because Amer America will tell you something different. Yeah. It's just a, it's a, it's a illusionary power um, in their mind. Um, and we, when you look at it, women, you know, has this thought today in the 20th century, 21st century saying that, oh, women's, you know, gaining power, mm -hmm. women's gaining, you know, equal rights, you know, to the man. You look at the world, the infrastructures of the world. Um, you look at the pyramids, you look at the skyscraper, you look at the buildings, you look at the great empire, mm -hmm. and you say, who built it? Mm -hmm. Women's body, her physiology alone doesn't support the growth of this world, mm -hmm. of this earth. Her body doesn't allow her to build just the, the mega infrastructures that we have today right. and the things that she enjoys. So that alone shows you that her right. body alone is not in tune with the pro progress of this world. Right. It's impossible. Right. Can't carry these hard lo if what's the first thing a feminist do? They can't if they need help. They have a refrigerator. 
Call the man. Mm -hmm. That's right. showing you right. Your body is not in tune with right. your mind. Right. It's not. You want to go to war. Your body's not in tune. You had your period in the middle of the plane. Right. You put damn Hillary Clinton, <laughs> up, damn Warren up for president. Her body's not in tune. Next thing you know, she's having peaceful talks. They said, Iran, nuke. He said something against me, nuke. <laughs> right, right. Now, now, women do um, play a role in terms of reproduction, bringing men into the world. Yeah, yeah, play that role. And I'm not saying that that's, that should be your, that's your only purpose. But that is what you were brought into the world for. You were made to, to carry the seed of the man and, and to reproduce. Okay? Now, am I saying that, that that's, that's it? You just lay with you and bang you and that's it? No. I'm not saying that. But man and woman have a purpose. The woman's made, woman's made her job is to support the man. The man is the backbone, is the leader of the family, the household of the family. The black man's the head. The woman's the spine. She's the spine. You need both. Both are very much, in, 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 um, both are very much important to the human body. Very important, okay. but he saw. But he saw knows. He saw knows. Once, once you um, cut the head off, the spine is useless. The body is useless. And, 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 and on the so-called white man, he knows this. He knows this. But the black woman has been trained to be just, just as much against the black man as the white man is. But read on. Excellent. Black song. people. Yeah, indeed. If exactly. you look at it, though, uh, it's only the black woman. That does that, that does that that doesn't really support her men, right? Because the other nation, all their women is is in order, right? They even, are. even though they still fight for that little power, the Chinese woman behind her men, mm -hmm. the Japanese woman, <laughs> forget about it. That's mm -hmm. why you see a lot of brothers with why they want to be with the Japanese women mm -hmm. because of the submissive right. uh, nation of the uh, the way that was brought up. Right. It's only it's only our women. Right. When you now it's our women. Right now, because right. back then it wasn't. They supported us. Right. They mm -hmm. did back in the sixties. They supported us before the sixties. Mm -hmm. They supported us. During slavery, even when we was working in fields together, they supported us. We were, they were loyal. There was respect. There was no baby mamas. Mm -hmm. There was no running around being ratchet. That was unheard of in the, in the cotton fields. Unheard of. A ratchet slave. That wasn't unheard That wasn't heard of. <laughs> running. There was no diva on the slave, slave ships. There was no diva or, or, or gangster <laughs> or boss B in the, plantation. in the damn plantation, nope. man. Not at all. In the fields. Nowhere. That's, some, that's, a, new, that's, a, that's a new creation in the earth. That's that's a, a freak. That's a freak of nature of America. Bruh. That's what that is. And, yeah. You no, know, I was gonna say some. Um, in Sirach, uh twenty six fourteen, it says there's nothing better um, than a woman that has a mind that is well instructed. Right. Now think about it. instructed by whom? Instructed by your men, your leaders. Right. Their mind, our women today, mind is being instructed by Esau. Right. So there's no honor in that. Right. You, a lot of sisters, believe it or not, y'all are not, even in, even in marriage, some of you who are actually married, you're not really married to your husband. You're married to the white man. Mm -hmm. You're married to, that's your God. That's who you see. That's, 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 that's why oftentimes, it's, it's been, surveys been done where they ask a woman, what do you want? You want a good man? Or you want a thug? I think you brought this to me yesterday. Mm -hmm, yes, and and yes. most of them picked a thug because a thug is a man that what he take charge. Exactly. He's in a thug. He don't take no <laughs> sh from you. He don't play with you. He ain't laughing with you. You ain't smacking him up beside his head. You know he ain't playing with you. He, he's authoritative. He's firm. He's strong. He's tough. Yeah, women like that because he's there's a power behind that. The man's weak. And some of you women, y'all prey on weak men. A weak, uh, yes, dear, no, dear. Y'all, y'all look for that. <laughs> Because America trains y'all to look for that. Rather than build them up, you look for a man that's already broken and you, and, you try, you, and you use him as a puppet and you talk to him and run him and run around the house. And then a lot of you men who have that going on raise your children or daughters and they're the same way as a woman has raised, ra 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 stay the same way as if the child was raised by a single mother. Because really, he is a single mother. You, you a mother too. Because your wife is, wife is running you, running the house. So read on, right, read on. Exodus uh, 32, <laughs> verse 25. The book of Book of Exodus. You looking for deep? No, give me um, what's that? What's that? I'm sorry. Go back to Genesis three again. Genesis three again. Genesis three, uh, verse, verse five again. Yeah, verse six. Verse six. Yeah, it's gonna be to verse ten. The book of Genesis, chapter three, verse six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. See, the tree to be desired, you desired to make her wise. Enlightened, gave her understanding. Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Go ahead. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Right. Read on. So they were, they were naked. Go ahead. 
And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. The trees will be people. That's another class, right? And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and because I hid I was myself. Naked, and I hid myself, go ahead. And he said, who told, who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree? Whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? So what does naked mean? Give me Exodus 32, verse 25. Because people say, oh, Adam and Eve walked around butt naked all the time. No, if they walked around butt naked, there'd be no reason for them to say he's naked. Okay? There's no reason to say I'm naked if he's already naked. So it's not referring to, not, that's just a metaphor. It's not talking about them being literally naked. It's referring to something else. What they, what they got involved in. Exodus 32, verse 25. Read. The book of Exodus, chapter 32, verse 25. And when Moses saw that the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Because Aaron got, Aaron made them, um, took their um, earrings from the people when Moses was gone and made them a golden calf to worship. So this is going into idolatry. This is going into idolatry. Adam and Eve, Eve got, Eve, Eve dabbled in idolatry. Idolatry. Idolatry goes back to those gods you mentioned earlier. Isis, Horus, Semiramis, Ashereth, Ishtar. And you gain a certain level of wisdom dealing with those gods. But that's evil. That's the left side. And she introduced that nonsense to Adam. And Adam, who knew better, partook in it also. And then the roles, and by him doing that, the roles were what? Reversed. The roles are reversed and death was brought into the world. Give me um first chronicles. Can, can Second I chronicles twenty eight. Yeah. Can I make a point on that? Yeah. Real quick, I'm not sure if you have this in your scriptures. Was in Solomon two verse twenty four? Yeah, I have that, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Second Chronicles twenty eight. Bra, <laughs> bra. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Can't win. Second, <laughs> Second Chronicles. I got it covered. Second Chronicles twenty eight verse one. It's a good try, man. You know that's good. <laughs> the book. Sorry. One is gonna be verse one to six, and we jump to nineteen. The book of Second Chronicles, chapter uh, chapter twenty eight, verse one. Uh -huh, but this is regarding King Ahaz. Go ahead. Ahaz was twenty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. Uh -huh. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images for ba Balaam. Right. So he made molten images, like like pretty much like what Aaron did earlier regarding making Israel naked. He made um, molten images and um and, and a, a, a pagan god. Go ahead. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom. And burnt his children in the fire. Right. So, so this guy who had his, took his children and sacrificed his children to other gods. This is abortions. Okay. He took his children and, sat and burnt them in fire in honor of this god Balaam. Go ahead. After the abominations of the heathen. After the ways of the heathen. Go ahead. Whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. Go ahead. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Right. Wherefore the Lord his God delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria, and they smote him and carried away a great multitude of them captives and brought them to Damascus. Syria, go ahead. And he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel, who smote them with a great slaughter. For Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ram Ram slew in Judah an hundred and twenty thousand in one day, which were all valiant men, because they had forsaken the Lord God their father. Because when the king went off, what happens? The people go off also. Now jump to verse 19. Watch this. Verse 19. For the Lord brought Judah low because of Ahaz, king of Israel. For he made Judah naked. He did what? For he made Judah <laughs> naked. What does that mean? Their clothes came off? No. He made them naked because their protection from God was removed by them serving other gods. He made Judah naked. Go ahead. And transgressed sore against the Lord. That's the transgression. So Adam and Eve did the same. Adam said to the Lord, yo, I I'm naked. And the Lord said to Adam, how you know you're naked? What'd you do? Did you go against my commandment I gave you and worship other gods? That's what it's referring to in Genesis. It's going into idolatry. Even Adam began to dabble in idolatry. That's the tree of good and evil. Because it's good because there's wisdom in it, but there's evil because it's the, it's the wisdom that the Lord didn't Israel, want Israel to deal with. So it's good and evil. Now, get me uh, Genesis 3.16. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 16. So the, the, the um, Genesis 3 is a metaphor, but as you read further into the, into the Old Testament, it gives you detail or explanation behind what it meant when it said they were naked and so forth. Genesis 3, 
Genesis 3 and verse uh, 16. And when it says, put, when it says earlier, I, I bypassed it. When it says they uh, sold fig leaves and so forth on themselves, it means they were, hi they were hiding. They were doing it in secret. And when, when God came down, he caught them. And they were hiding among the people who they were learning from that were there aside from Adam, further in the garden. Genesis 3 and verse 16, we're going to read the verse 19. The book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 16. Until the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. So as a result of you, of, of this act of yours, Eve, I will do what? Read again. Until the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. I will make, multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. That's why I have menstrual. And that's why I have labor pains. Child labor. That's what that is. So when you, when you tell me you have a child, bring a child into the world. That's God's rem reminder of what your mother did, Eve did, mm -hmm. for going against Adam. But y'all, y'all don't, y'all don't believe, y'all don't listen. Y'all don't listen. You, despite, despite all of that stuff, y'all don't listen. Go ahead. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And he shall what? And he shall rule over thee. And he shall rule over you. So read the verse the bottom part again. In sorrow, thou shalt bring forth children. Shall labor, go ahead. And thy, thy, and thy desire shall be to thy husband. Shall be, your desire shall be to your husband. Go ahead. And he shall rule over thee. That was the original order anyway. But Satan caused what? The, the, the um, roles to be reversed. Go ahead. Indeed. Sisters, you use this verse to say, no, that you see, that was implemented that at that time. Right. You know, most times prior to that, that wasn't implemented. The most High just right. introduced man having power over the woman. And um, her desire being towards him. No, it's not the fact that the Most High just introduced that. He had to remind her of her role in a marriage. Right. He had to remind her of her position. Listen, your desire is to your husband and not to this man that you allow to deceive you. Your love and your and it, and your the author, your authority figure is your husband, not this man. What Eve did was she stepped outside of the order of her marriage and her place. Right. Exactly. That's what, exactly. That's exactly what happened. Give me um and things uh, sorry D, and yeah. things begin to fall apart. <laughs> Once you play out of that order, things fall apart. It mm -hmm. fell apart in the garden, and we're seeing the same thing today. Mm -hmm. Our women fall out that order God um, set for us. Mm -hmm. Nothing goes right. Nothing goes right at all. Then y'all complain about many no good, many ain't this, many ain't sh. Meanwhile, you keep meanwhile you keep making the same mistake over and over again. Baby father number one, baby father number two, number two, baby father number three. And see, many no good. No, your decisions ain't no good. Mm -hmm. Your decisions aren't no good. Not the men. The men ain't no good, and you keep picking them. So you, you can't blame the men for your bad decisions. Because at the end of the day, the, both the men and women, a lot, a lot of you sisters get involved with men who aren't even mature. They may, they, may have, they, may be mat they may have matured down there, but they're not mature up here. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the main issues behind a lot of single parenthoods, single, single household, parent households, picking irresponsible men in their, in their house. They're responsible in the bedroom. <laughs> you know, they, they put it down, put it back out, and it's all good. Your eyes are on the back of your head. You were good. Then the baby's up in there. He's like, oh, uh, that, that's nice. Baby, uh, that's nice. Now you're mad now. Now you're angry. You understand? So that's why the Bible constantly, constantly, constantly establishes marriage, marriage, marriage. The Bible talks about um, proving, proving, proving. Okay, the marriages were arranged back then. There was no running around and banging this and that. That wasn't that wasn't that's something we learned. That's something new. Okay, this whole sleeping around stuff. That's some that's some that's some heathens. Nowhere in Bible do you is in the Bible do you find Israel just looking around saying who am I going to smash next? That's a, that's a learned habit. That uh, that I can say is a learned habit. Okay, and now and now it has become reinforced. <laughs> and many of us in this room, myself. Who were raised in that thought of oh, it's okay, just protect yourself and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. But that's not biblical. It's not right at all. And that only furthers the disease. That only furthers the the uh, the neglect of children, the abortions. That only furthers it. Doesn't make it better. Where are we at? Verse seventeen. Verse seventeen. Yeah, we're gonna be to verse nineteen. Verse seventeen. And and unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying. Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. You know what he said? Because thou hast hearkened unto thy wife. Because you listened unto the woman. I'm going to do what? Read again. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, 
and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of thy life. Go ahead. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Meaning, meaning you're going to work hard now. How I made work easy for you when you were um, planting things. Now it's going to be hard now. You're going you're gonna to work hard. Go ahead. That's the nine to five now. Go ahead. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it was thou taken, for thus thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. You're going to die now, because Adam wasn't meant to die at all. He said, but you, you're going to die, and your woman too. And thinking that's also prophetic too, when it says, can you read that part again? Go back to that. Yeah. Verse 19. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat Wait, bread. Go to the um, previous verse. Verse 18. Thorns, then you probably want 17. Yeah. 17, yeah. And until Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Curse is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. Thorns and thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Keep going. And the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread to thy return unto the ground. You know, prophetically, Adam was the father of all creation, all mm -hmm. men. Mm -hmm. But you know that's prophetically speaking about Israel because look at the ruling empires today. Esau. Esau doesn't work to the sweat of his brow. Esau doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Esau did not build up America. Esau, even when it comes to farming, they never share crops. They never pick the cotton. You know, uh, even today, when you have um, the crops today, who's on the fields? Northern Kingdom. So that's also prophetically that Israel in the future will serve out the curses. Mm -hmm. Cursed shall thou be in the fields. Mm -hmm. So we'll be cursed to what? To pick the crops, the tobacco, you know, the sugar cane, the, you know, the banana, the cocoa, the rubber, mm -hmm. the rubber. Everywhere you go, we are the working class. We are the workers. Mm -hmm. we, are the, we are the burn, the, the, um, the wage slaves, the wage slaves of mm -hmm. America. Because it's not talking about the other nations. Mm -mm. They hire us. They get us to do the, um, the, the, the production. Manual labor, work. right. Manual labor. Mm-hmm. There was a Psalm 2, verse uh, 23. 24. And also that goes into, uh, your, I say you are gods and thou shalt die like men. Yep, you should, exactly. <laughs> you are gods, you shall die like men. Yep. And you told Adam the same thing. Yeah. Wisdom of Psalm 2, 23. The book of Wisdom of Psalm, chapter 2, verse 23. But God created man to be immortal. So, so Adam's purpose was to be immortal. Go ahead. And made him to be in an image of his own eternity. So Adam, he said, he said, thus the art, thus you shall return. So Adam didn't live that out. Okay, go ahead. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil. Who's envy? Eve's. <coughs> Satan introduced envy into Eve. You could be like Adam. Why come you're not like Adam? How come you're not like Adam? You could be like Adam too if you want. You won't die. Surely going against your husband. You won't die. That's what white man tells you today. Go against the black man, F the black man. You won't die. You don't need no black man. You independent. You, you on your own. You battle by yourself. It's the same thing. I'll give you a section eight. Yeah, I'll give you section eight. You don't need no black man. Welfare, section eight, public assistance. Wake, what wake stand for? Women, infants, and children. You don't need no man. I got you. F the black man. I'll give you the welfare. I give you the pub, I give you the food stamps. I got you EBT cards. I got you. Hmm. The, there's no man in the house. More money for you. Go ahead. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. So, ne nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world. Go ahead. And they that do hold of his side, Satan's side. Go ahead. Do find it. They don't hold. They take hold of Satan on Satan's side. When you're on the devil's side, you're gonna find death also. Go to chapter 14, verse 11. Chapter 14, verse 11. Wisdom of Solomon, <laughs> chapter 14, verse 11. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation, because in the creature of God... The creature means the creation of God. Go ahead. They are become an abomination. Idols. Go ahead. And stumbling blocks to the souls of men, mm -hmm. and a snare to the feet of the unwise. Verse 12. Watch this. For the devising of idols. For the, dev for the devising of idols. Watch this. Was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Was the beginning, the genesis of spiritual fornication. Go ahead. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. For death into the world. Same thing. So Psalm is revealing to us also that Adam and Eve got mixed up in idolatry. 
Eve got caught up in idolatry. What do you see women and a lot of sisters being involved in? Horoscopes. Mm -hmm. Ooh, what's your sign? I'm a Virgo. Mm -hmm. I'm a Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. I'm a Gemini. I'm Aquarius. Mm -hmm. You see mostly women involved in that nonsense. Men too. Men only fall because women fall behind it. Right. But the main ones you see pushing that, well, what's your sign? Oh, he a Scorpio? Oh, he must be a freak. You know, all the time. He a Virgo. Ooh, that's, just, that's what we, our, our, our signs attract. The main ones you see pushing that nonsense is our women. Women, not just black women, women in general, they, folk, they be on that thing hard. Mm -hmm. And it be nonsense. They check that thing every check it day. in the newspaper <laughs> every other day they're checking that thing. And you know what that shows? Uh, that shows a lack of confidence in themselves. Yeah. Because you, you need a horoscope to tell you what kind you know, of person what, you are. Yeah, what, what's going to happen to you. You're going to be lucky. Uh, right. Whatsoever, you know. If, um, and, and there's wisdom, and there's some wisdom in that zodiac stuff if you get deep into it. Yeah. That's witchcraft. why. That's yeah. witchcraft. That's why um, the Lord said good and evil because there's wisdom behind it, but there's evil behind it also. Because to gain that wisdom, we must do certain things that's against nature to obtain it. Absolutely. The so called white man is heavily delves deep, deep into that stuff that Adam is involved in. Mm -hmm. All right? All right. Let me go to Psalm verse, jump to verse 25, we're going to be to verse 27. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 25. So that there reigned in all men without exception, blood. So men. when it came to when idolatry set place into the world, what happened now? Read on. So that there reigned in all men without exception, blood, manslaughter, murder, theft, and dissimulation, corruption, unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness. Going into what? Marriage is being destroyed. Because a lot of the people we find in the Christian church, their marriage be chaos. Be all kind of scandals going on, pastor banging men's wives, or banging or pastor banging men's husbands, whatever the case may be. There be all kind of nonsense going on in these churches. Catholic school, Catholic. You got child molestation going on. That's all idolatry. Go ahead. Tumult, perjury, <coughs> disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, mm -hmm. the falling of souls, the falling of souls. Go ahead. Changing of kind. Ah, changing of kind. I mean, man goes turns into a woman. Woman turned into a man. Transgenderism. Mm -hmm. That's what's involved in idolatry. You'll find many of these so-called transgenders in the Christian church. They try to force the church to accept them. Marry. I want to be married in the church. And they force the law. They push it where they make it where the law is changed to marry them in the church. Because they're Christian. It's the same nonsense. Changing of kind. Sex change. Go ahead. Disorder in marriages. Disorder in marriages. Hey, well, today is called an entanglement. <laughs> Disorder in marriages is an entanglement. Go ahead. Adultery. Adultery is an entanglement also. Go ahead. And shameless uncleanness. And shameless uncleanness. Go ahead. For the worshiping of idols. For the here we go. He's gonna say it again. <laughs> For the worshiping of idols. Go ahead. Not to be named. Not to be named. Go it, ahead. Is what? Is the beginning. Is the beginning. Go ahead. The cause. Go ahead. And the end of all evil. See? Is the beginning, the cause, and the end of all evil. Evil began from the beginning of the Bible with idolatry. And it led to what? Disorder in marriage. How so? When Adam listened to the wife. That's disorder in marriage. So we're going to end on that. Take a quick um, commercial break for five minutes. We'll be back after this. Dialect, I-U-I-C It's the payback 
Hey yo, a lot of stains on our name throughout the time that passed But not a lot of grains left in that hourglass We used to rock fellas, hit dames then dash Now through the rock we built a nation waiting on Jehovah's wrath Reporting live from the five boroughs We gon' burn them bogeys, this ain't a new port or Marlboro And our youth they called us nigga team when they the cancer But they dead, I don't talk to them, ain't no necromancer Like A-Rod, them Yankees are basemen No cap, them Yankees gon' say why in the end, yeah it's been a while since we seen Jerusalem, we miss our mother Them nations jumped us, we coming back with our big brother That'll more than even the odds, they try to bombard us with fraud But in this spiritual war, you grip a sword and draw To spare chili, put a hole in one of them birdies We treat the eagle like a bogey when we up the paw Yeah ah, the uh, Swag like Solomon with 12, you can see the picture Victor, it's all rad when you read the scriptures Eat em, we cause the L, and death we bring Like Yahushua, my line from the second king Warfare and liberty, city or Gotham Dudes never read in the hood, so they robbing Police shooting bullets at brothers, elite marksmen, no love We Philly shells, Bernard Hopkins, I'm a black prophet sent from God I'm the medium, if I was Edom and knew my fate, I'd do me in In this white world, the black man's inaudible no Russian vengeance, but I'm Roman in the Oracle. Redemption, the second exodus of war cries. From the Red Sea, we crossed over Jordan like AI. On the corner selling mustard, live and direct. Or you can get the sword on online on your IP address. This black man getting vengeance on Edom, it's a miracle. Whipping on their back is revenge at its pinnacle. In China, we can see the chinks in your armor. You been cooking bats in Japan and ate dogs from the collar. But when my body changed, I have more abs than your name. For I'm in God's body, my lot is highly acclaimed. These nations be talking ish. Mal is in their doctrine. Either get down or lay down. For Israel is the only option. But we wrestle with the devil like Naphtali's meaning. Like when the devil fought for Moses' body. We steady scheming. Like a movie scene, I saw 12 teams with angelic beams. Killed Edom and blood splattered all over the screen. And they got beaten inside a chariot and saw Edom ice cream. For this is not deja vu. For I lived through this dream. Israel. Oh, that's right. That's right, y'all. This is the The payback. It's the story that's ignited fierce passions across the nation as allegations of racism and miscarriage of justice tear apart a small Florida town. Three weeks ago, Trayvon Martin, an unarmed black teenager, was shot down by a white neighborhood watchman who claimed self-defense and has not at this point been arrested. And it's caused a public outcry that spread like wildfire. ABC's Matt Gutman brings us the latest now from Sanford, Florida. This is the face of 17-year-old Trayvon Martin, whose death has provoked weeks of demonstrations and massive internet petitions, and tonight, a rally in New York City. Let's get ready to rumble the lion out the jungle Slaves on the high horse now, watch father take a tumble What you acting shy for now, you think just like your uncle Time to Isaiah 14, 21, you fuck to me and them You stain this name, your blood gon' smith for them We here for them, placing the blame upon your fear of them That's dissonance, cause you never change but claim your innocence It's sickening, can't wait to see your race go missing What if I explored your continent like Dora Swiped your land, got you the boot and then you to cross the border Presented myself friendly just so I could get the Clues to find your riches, then proceeded to give your nation the blues. Told little bear's name is Steven. He's not a man, but a heathen, and he must be saved for that reason. Have you built up my empire like Bob used to do it? Take your life and your wife and sell little Nick Jr. You forget that, or would you want some get back? If your answer's the latter, then black lives matter, and you, you need to sit back for the ride. If LGBTQ is not included, hate to break your heart, kid, but this that sweet chin music is the payback. The payback. Oh, that's right, that's right, y'all. This is the man. <laughs> the payback! Oh, yeah. Esau, you know what's coming for you. You know what's coming for you. Right? And listen, the payback! We ain't forgot about y'all, little nations, too. Now, y'all gonna get y'all's, too. I said, the payback! Uh. Ha! Hit me! Ah! Yo, hey, hey, 
Hey, let me start by saying Esau is the damn devil. He gon' beat his swords into plow shells and several. I'm setting the blood of the elite. My radar it detects your death coming from five flames and heavy metal. Uh, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of. Right, we're back, we're back, we're back. We are back. We're gonna open up with uh first Timothy two and thirteen. We just left from Wisdom of Solomon. <laughs> we just left from Wisdom of Solomon fourteen, verse twenty seven, where we went into Adam and Eve, the sin that entered into the garden through Satan's through Eve's envy was idolatry. All right, so Paul Paul's going to elaborate on that. Let's get first Timothy two. We're gonna read verse thirteen to fourteen. I think you also gonna show in that. Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. The, uh, we mentioned earlier about the shameless and cleanness that idolatry introduces into the world, especially these uh, Christian couples and, and, and celebrities. Give them a quick uh, example of uh, shameless and cleanness. Show me a picture real quick. Also, changing of kind. Yeah, changing of kind. This is an example of shameless and cleanness. Changing of kind. Okay, this is their son. This is not a little girl. This is their son. All right, and you see the father in his, in his skirt, the mother's in a skirt, and the son's in a oh god, with yeah. heels on. High, uh, it's, this is madness, man. And female and, and, pants, and, right? Female pants. This this is the this is the example. This is the example right here. I'm talking I'm talking about when it comes to confusion. They, they they these people these these this couple in particular are being spearheaded or being used as the spearhead to push the homosexual agenda in the black community. And, and Dick, you know that that's our role model. Uh, right, he's young, a role model. Right, both you know, of them. You know, every young black kid wants to be like Dwayne Ray. Right, and every actress want an actress is gonna be like uh, Gabrielle Union. Yeah, right, you know. And Dick, we always take wickedness to the next level, to mm -hmm. the extreme. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Get that Timothy um, two thirteen, the book of First Timothy chapter two verse thirteen. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Right, that's the order of things. Adam was first <laughs> formed, then Eve. Go ahead, we read that earlier. Go ahead. And Adam was not deceived. Adam was not deceived because Adam knew better. Go ahead. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression because, because Satan convinced her to go against her husband and introduce idolatry to her husband. Go ahead, reversing the roles. But now she's teaching him. Go ahead. Verse fifteen. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Not, but notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing. Go ahead. If they continue in faith. If she continues in faith. Go ahead. And four children. Go ahead. And charity. And loving her neighbor as herself. And holiness with sobriety. And understands her role as the as the um as the um in the household under the man, not a drug dealer or an abusive a hole, but a righteous man, not some <laughs> loser. But a righteous man. I will make that clear. Am I saying be the tale of, of, of a man who's speaking that a loser and just ain't worth a damn? But that comes with repenting and your mind being your mind being changed, your thought process being changed. Because a lot of y'all complain about men, you ain't worth a damn yourself. So you gotta be very mindful of these things. We we are all, even myself, we are all a work in progress. And the relationship works, and both of y'all working on each other, working work on yourselves together. That's what brings the marriage closer together. With all this pointing the finger, you know, it's him, no, it's you, it's me, you know. Adam did the same thing. The woman you gave me, it was her. The Lord said, I don't give a damn who, who it was. You knew better. And he got death. Regardless of Adam's excuses, he got death anyway, both of them. Let's get um, Sirach 25, verse 24. And that, child, uh, and that being saved in childbearing is not going um, into the sister having babies and receiving salvation. No, that's right. going into the sister's um, staying and within her order in Genesis 3, verse 16. Because mm -hmm. a lot of these sisters, even within Israel, believe that just because they're married to a man that, of the Lord, and just because they attend congregation, that they're going to get the kingdom by calling the husband a BS, a, a B a ass band, nigga. A band. A band. A band, yeah. A B A, B -A, B -A, B -A nigga. Talking about, a B A nigga. You think you're going to get the husband by calling your husband a B A nigga? Or calling, telling your husband he ain't, he ain't SH? Cursing him out, calling police on him? Mm -hmm. No, you're not going to get the kingdom. Look at Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. The same wife. She was married to Lot. And during, during that time period, like I said, a woman was much more in order than they are now. And she didn't get the kingdom because what? Her mind wasn't like her, her Lord's mind. Right. That's the only way you're going to be able to get the kingdom. If your mind is like a, a man and a woman that agrees together. That's a good point because remember, Lot lived in, lived in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the, and the angels told him, when we, when we destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, do not look back. Don't look back. I'm going to destroy it. Keep your head straight. Don't look behind you. 
but Lot's wife was comfortable with that, with that environment around her. Like you women today. This homosexual thing, oh, that's my gay friend. He's funny. Y'all are comfortable in the Sodom and Gomorrah atmosphere. Like Lot's wife. That's what Christ said in the New Testament. What did Christ say? Remember Lot's wife. Mm. Remember Lot's wife. He said that new, that's <laughs> one of the very, very short verse, but a very, very big meaning. He said, remember Lot's wife. She was an unbelieving soul. Okay? Because Lot was aggravated with all that stuff going on. But the woman, some reason, for some odd reason, when it comes to our women, man, we, they, they find comfortability with a man acting like them. Because that like, they makes them feel powerful. He wants to be like me. He wants to be me. That's that envy back to Eve again. Yeah, he weakly, he's like, he want to be, he want to wear a dress. He, he want to get, he wants to get breasts like me. He wants to get vagina like me. Yeah, I'm going to teach him. I'm going to guide him. Then he looks better than you with the surgery and steals your men. <laughs> now you look stupid now. Yeah. I've seen men, got, oh God, for, it's bad. I've seen men oh, no, with surgery looking better than, listen, look no, better D. than women. No, it's true. No, You've seen it. Oh, You've seen man. it. And a lot of men fought, I'm saying, a lot of men fought, a lot of men fought for it. They fought for that stuff. Hey, bring up the pictures. I'm a front door. That. <laughs> that I'm not doing. That mothers get spirits on them. <laughs> but if you if you seen, I've seen, I've seen pictures of women look like um, men, men with beards. These will look like straight dude, pretty boys. Look like I'm like, how the hell that happened? They all muscular, everything. Beard got a bit of all them hormonal pills. Ugh. I've seen it. And you women, y'all talk about there's no good men. Then you hang around homosexuals. They learn how to. They, they, they hang around you, learn you, then they go and get men. <laughs> they shorten your options you, and you don't even the man doesn't know you know the, 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 way, the way the way he's the way the white man has it set up now the surgeries and stuff that thing that thing i'm telling you thinking the word the crazy thing about it too is all right the woman's trying to be like the man and still trying to get the man get the man uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna give an example get that 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 movie uh queen and slim <laughs> queen and slim oh no don't do it oh, yeah get queen and slim i'm gonna give you an example oh no Queen and Slim. I didn't know. I'm gonna give you an example of how I didn't know. I did not know this is a a, a a man. Get the Queen Queen and Slim. You about to mess up everybody's day today. Uh, they I'm, I'm, I'm gonna kill it. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna give you an example. It's a movie. It's a video with Fat Joe called Lean Back, and there's a woman on a black. I think it was a black. Uh, what are those black car? I forgot what it's called. It was on a paper, pop, popular uh, cars back then, and she's and it's Cadillac. Uh, he well, forgot what it was. Made back something like that, sitting on top of the of, of the um of the car, and he got he's distanced from from him, and that's a male. Mm. That's a male. There was a big controversy about that when people started knowing that was a man. Right, and then, <laughs> then, that, then that man said, "Yo, y'all getting mad?" But a lot of them girls you seen them videos popping their ass up right now. Too. Those are men. Those are my right. friends. Right. Oh. Yeah. Those are my friends. You like? So those video videos. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> say that to him. Hey, that one, hey. Say that to him. Dig. I, 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 tell, I say this to brothers all the time, especially single brothers, man. You don't know how lucky you are to be in this truth and yeah. being guided the right way. Mm -hmm. If not, you be in a club right now, you be a victim of rape. <laughs> you find, you think you get a dime piece Come here, nigga. and the voice change. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Sometimes, it, sometimes it don't change. Sometimes it's, they got them pills, they boys get real light. Oh, yeah. You don't know who it is. You don't know who's who. Good morning. There you go. Yeah, check that Adam's out. <laughs> that right there. Click that one. Oh, I can't even watch it. Yeah, I'm <laughs> turn <Damn>. my eyes. <laughs> Stay in the spirit. <laughs> India Ugh. Y'all about keep playing around in these clubs, man. Mm hmm Blow it up some. You never know. What the hell? That do no sense. Yeah. Go to the other one. With, 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 she's like the Bokeem Woodbine. That other one. That Queen of some image with her on his lap. Hey D, you can still see the jawline. Do you so see a jawline? But right it. there, go right there. That right there, yeah. Now, nah, some of y'all gonna say, "I know that's a man," only because I'm telling you. Y'all yeah. gonna front and say, "Oh yeah, yeah." Some you can't. I'm, there's some worse than this, but that's an example. That's an example of one. I've seen worse. I have seen far worse than this. And your women sit there and y'all advocate this nonsense, man. Y'all <laughs> play around with this changing of kind. That's all I want. Hit that up the screen, man. That's all I want. What? The black woman's like, how can I keep a man? The get black gay man says, I know. I'm going to become <laughs> you. I'm going to become you. And, I get and I'm going to become more feminine than you are. I'm going to show you how to keep a man. Right. <laughs> Yo, you see how things are twisted and backwards? The black woman's trying to figure out how to keep a man. And then a black man, in his logical sense, and his 
well, gay logical sense. Yeah, illogical sense. Illogical sense. Says, you know what? I'm going to show you how to get a man. And they show, and they not only that, they show the women how to walk, mm-hmm. talk, right? So Miss, you, you, Miss, Mrs. J. So you got, so you have a man. So, but I show you that men know the characteristics that a woman should have, possess, because mm-hmm. even because we we know what we want in a woman. Mm-hmm. So a gay man, his mind at one point in time had that same type of you know. So he um, knows that's he knew that okay, this is how the woman supposed to talk, how to walk. Mm-hmm. So a gay man does this. Oh, you know what? I'm gay now, so I'm going to become what these women are mm-hmm. not. I'm going to take their men. That's what they now do. I'm going oh, to hang around women more mm-hmm. to perfect it and then become a woman. He's hanging around a white woman because I don't know. He no, can't. women, black women too. <laughs> no, no, black women primarily. Yeah, no, yeah, brother. Yeah. Black women. They hang around black very women. heavy in our community. Heavily in our community. They hang around, they hang around black women in the islands. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Not in New York. <laughs> Read uh, 24 again. I mean 24. Sirach chapter 25 verse 24 Mm -hmm. of the woman came the beginning of sin right go ahead and through her we all die but death into the world go ahead give the water no passage give the water no passage you have to have your house in check go ahead neither a wicked woman liberty to gad abroad liberty to what gad abroad you know what gad abroad mean gad's an old term for talk too much gad abroad that's your that's you that's you sitting down at a red table with your wife that she explains to you that she had an entanglement. That's your woman gadding abroad. When you when you have your woman telling 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 you that your son feels since he was three years old he felt like a girl. That's <coughs> giving that's that's you violating this verse right here, giving her no passage. A wicked woman liberty to gad abroad. That's gossiping, running her mouth, hanging around the wrong with other women. That's giving her liberty to gad abroad. That further destroys the household when you do that. Okay, now let's get uh, world star hip hop. Now I want that video. And also, Dick, there's a thing called swingers. Right, swingers. Right, swingers. swingers. And uh, there was a rumor that um, what's his name, Will Smith and his wife. Yeah, but swingers. Was, part, was swingers. They deny it, but I don't know. I, I'm not gonna. That was a, that, it, yeah, that was years ago. That's the filth of the industry, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They all they all involved with with that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Stuff, yeah. Hollywood's the whole was this world within itself. Hollywood. There's certain rules and things they do among themselves. This is now this is going into Egypt, modern Egypt. These are uh, Greek Arabs or you know white white Arabs, TikTok. and um, they they were on this at this thing called TikTok. You have like Instagram, you have TikTok videos where they dance. So this, this is, these women of Egypt or Arabs in Egypt decide to fall behind the Americanized woman and watch what happens. This is this is this is the non-Western world. Watch this. Hit play. Meanwhile, an Egyptian court has decided to jail five women social media influencers. Jail them. Or Vermin. Them that supposedly violated Egyptian model code. The two prominent TikTok stars and three others involved in managing their accounts have been given two year sentences. They've also been asked to pay Look, they're wearing pants. Of the heck of thousand Egyptian pounds. That's the equivalent of about 18,000 US dollars each. Pause. <laughs> so they got charged with 5,000 pounds or 18,000 dollars American. To be bailed out for dancing on TikTok. Look how they're dressed. They're following America. They're following behind America and they, they're paying the price for it. They don't put, see, only in America where, where white folks are at, Europe or, or America, women can run around and do what they want to do and get abroad. In the Far East, Middle East, they don't play that over there. They're not playing with you. That's why you black women who don't want to go to on vacation. Let's go to Paris. Let's go to Spain. Italy. Italy. Let's go to Italy. Yeah. They don't want to go to Iran. Y'all don't want to go to Iraq. Hell no. Y'all know better. They don't go to Syria. No. Yeah. Pakistan, you ain't going there. Because y'all know where to go. They might not come back. You may not come back. <laughs> you, you wear them tight Spanish pants over there. Watch what happened to you. Stoner. They'll kill you. Beat the hell out of you and me and probably your man for letting it go on. Press play. Three year old Hanan Hossam was arrested in the month of April after she posted a video encouraging women to build friendships with men over TikTok. Now, in her video, Hassam also told her followers that girls could actually earn money by working with her. Another influencer, Mavada al <laughs> See what he says? Accuse of moral. Mm-hmm. Moral code breach. Yep, moral code breach. Yeah, moral code breaches there. Yep. Go ahead, watch this. Look how they dress. Saying what were described as indecent photographs. Now, these were some of the photographs that she's posted on social media. The five women face separate charges over the source of their funds, most of which presumably come from their work as influencers on social media. Now, Aladham's lawyer has confirmed that they will be filing an appeal against the verdict 
Recently, the Egyptian so government me, has been. But you know what the guy says? Indecent. Oh, indecent. Yeah. But they're, they're covering. <laughs> but they're covering. But he uh, says but saying it's indecent, indecent because of the pants. Their figures the, are showing. Yeah. What they they're wearing. That's normal wear over here. Right. Right. That's yeah, normal right. over here. Over there, it's indecent. It's indecent. Right. Go ahead. Cracking down <laughs> on singers and dancers on social media. That's that's Topics a belly dancer right there. For posting videos that the government now deems to be suggestive and rather racy. Last month, an Egyptian court had sentenced a prominent belly dancer to three years in prison over charges of inciting debauchery. Damn. In she got charged. Pause. She got charged for inciting debauchery. It means promiscuity. Okay, indecency, immorality. She's she got from um, three years in jail for inciting it. See, y'all see, see over here. That's cute. In America, among the white folk, y'all safe with that. Over there, they're not playing with you. Because these are Arabs, these are, they follow Islamic law over there, which comes from the Bible. And the Bible calls that immoral also, indecent also. Unlike over here, they enforce them laws over there. <laughs> and when the kingdom is established, we're going to enforce those laws again. That's right. The dick, those women now you play, now you're going to hit the, the thing, that's right. Now you put that's right. And then now you do it. <laughs> Bro, you know, scared, playing man. no damn bird sounds and all that. <laughs> when I say something. Go ahead. <laughs> if, 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 this, if this woman come over here, there you go. It's late, but there you all go. All praises, brother. All praises. All praises. All praises. You one point. Good job. Uh, and if this woman come over here, Dick, they'd be superstars. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. They'd be mega stars. Yeah. That's go ahead. crazy. Put, put a rest. Go ahead. It's almost over. We was supposed to a dancing video on TikTok. The Egypt's loose definition of what constitutes a moral code violation helps the government control social media activity. Any account with more than 5,000 followers can be and is monitored oh, by the government. Shoot. Boom. See, they don't play with you. You got more than 5,000 followers, they're watching you. The government watches the people, make sure they ain't putting nothing stupid on there or on social media to spread that nonsense in the land. And that's why, the, that's why Google, as well as Facebook, is looking to spread the internet all throughout this coast, um, um, all throughout the continent of Africa, yep. as well as South Africa. Um, mm -hmm. You have Google, as well as Facebook is doing that. Why? So they could break up the nucleus family. Yep. To because destroy, yep, because the member, uh, African, like say, even on a, those certain areas, don't have the American philosophy really instilled in them like that right. because of the um, lack of internet access and right. TV. But, but America but, finds a way to seep her way into <laughs> lands through financial, political means. They get their way in there. Internet, we give you internet. They, 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 they somehow get their claws into Easter or the Eastern or the, the, the Orient. Right. They get their, into the old world. They get their hands into you somehow. Okay, we can't get them religiously. Right, right. So we're, we're going we're gonna to sanction them. We're going to embargo them so that way they'll accept democracy. Because mm -hmm. once you enter democracy, all of that comes in there. The pants. Because the pants on it. That's all Americanized. Yep. There's real Muslims, they're not wearing no pants. So Egypt is slowly... Changing because right. there's pants on already mm -hmm. with the head wrap. That's over here in America too. Mm -hmm. Muslim women walking around with the damn we call uh hijabs. I think it's called the hijab right. yeah. with the pants on. That's conf that's a mess confusion. That's assimilation. They're trying to integrate the two together. So Egypt's like, okay, well you got the, you got the pants on, but that belly dancing stuff, your ass going to jail. Hey, Dick, how about with you? They got the uh, the third world countries that don't have no might as Egypt to monitor their people right you know there's countries that don't have that capability to say okay this is going to destroy our lives our culture they mm -hmm. can't stop it for example in haiti the president just signed legalized gay marriage mm -hmm. wow a priest or a pastor will be jailed if they refuse to marry gay couples there you go. in haiti right now right and homosexuals y'all don't they're not fighting for equality you're fighting for speciality because you, because you guys, that guy, like the brother said, white lesbian brother said, you guys are not fighting for equality. You guys are fighting for specialty because you changed right. the whole rule of marriage. Right. Y'all changed the laws of marriage. He said only y'all can do that. Only y'all can do that. Only y'all can change the laws of marriage. Only y'all can, can get a man attacked for using words. And that's not equality. That's specialty. That's special privilege. It's not equality. You go, go to jail in Haiti for not marrying a gay couple. But the Bible that the pastor uses is against it. Mm -hmm. So you're forcing him by law to marry you against his own moral code. You know how crazy that is? That's insane. That's not equality. That's supremacy. Now, first so you kill somebody, you kill your morality for somebody, for somebody else's right, morality. Right, right, exactly. For somebody else's immorality. First Corinthians 14.33. Regarding shameless uncleanness and what we saw just now.
1 Corinthians 14, 33 to 34. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. But We're seeing it, who is the author of confusion? America is. Edom, the Edomites saw. Go ahead. But of peace, as in all churches of the saints. Verse 34, watch this. Let your women keep silence in the churches. Because remember, Paul, the churches that Paul was over was in Asia Minor. One of the major goddess, gods or goddesses of Asia Minor was Diana of the Ephesians, which goes back to the Queen of Heaven in Egypt in Jeremiah 44, Ashtoreth. And when you worship that goddess, that put women in a particular position of authority over the men. Dominance over the men. That's where you get the term diva from. <coughs> Boss bitch from. Okay? Thug chick. Hot girl summer. That's all that comes from. That vibration comes from that. Worshiping those gods. That's where it comes from. Go ahead. For but it, God is, I'm sorry, but God is not the author of confusion. That is confusion. Go ahead. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. I mean to teach or use up authority over the men. Because women can teach. Their job is to guide the house and guide the children. They are to teach, but not teach the men. They're to be taught by the men and then it goes down to the children. They teach the children what the man taught them. That's the natural order of things. There's no equality. Equality is an illusion. There's no such thing as equality. Someone has to rule. Someone has to serve. There's nowhere in the world you can think of today or any other time women, where women had men in subjection in every spectrum. Militarily, physically, that's never took place on the earth. Never. Ever. It's fairy tale. It's, 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 it's cartoons. Go ahead. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. As also saith what law? Genesis 3.16. Yep. Your man shall rule over you. And Dick, if I may, uh, can I prove that you just said it? There's no ever equality. Yeah. It says creation. Uh, Genesis one twenty six. I'm sneaking that in. Dick and Barry. I don't have that one. Oh, prison. I don't have that one. Oh, prison. It's an almost. Think outside. You got one in. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we that. The book of Genesis, chapter one, verse twenty six. And God said, let us make man in our image. See that? Man was made in God's image. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. After our likeness. Uh -huh. And let them have dominion over the fish See, of the sea. Let them have dominion. There's mm -hmm. not no equality. The man that God created. Let them have dominion over the fish. Go ahead. And over the fowl of the air. Uh -huh. And over the cattle. Uh -huh. and, all, and over all the earth. And over, over what? And over all the earth. Over all the there earth and everything that's on the earth, mm -hmm. including mm -hmm. sisters. This is not women bashing. Mm -hmm. This is how the, the Lord created it. That's the mm -hmm. God's order. And, you know, go ahead. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So there you go right there. And that's for all men. That's not referring to this black men. That's all men, period. Yep. Have dominion over the fish of the sea because there's men all over the earth. They, God gave man dominion. And that includes over their women too. And that's still, and that, but the white man has given a false sense of authority to the woman in equality. It's not real. It's a lie. I'm going to show y'all. Because he had gods. <laughs> he had right. gods. Yeah, that's it. Revelation 12, verse 3. Revelation 12, verse 3. The book of Revelation, chapter 12, verse 3. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon. The great red dragon is a so-called white man today, the European race today, Caucasian race today, or translating to America. Go on. Go ahead. <coughs> Having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. America being an extension of these seven heads and ten horns. That's verse three. Read verse four. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. The third part of the stars of heaven is referring to the children of Israel, us. Go ahead. And did cast them to the earth. Between put us in, in, in captivity. Go ahead. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as, his, as it was born. Tried to kill Christ before he was born. Now jump to verse nine. So that's going into Herod. Jump to verse nine now. Verse nine. And the great dragon was cast out. The great, that same great red dragon was cast out. This is going into him being defeated or overthrown eventually. Go ahead. That old serpent. What's he called? That old serpent. The same spirit that was in the, that was in the garden of Eden with Adam and Eve that deceived the woman is alive today and well, uh, is, is here today in America. The so-called white man today is pushing the same agenda that his spirit pushed in the garden. It's the same spirit on earth again today. 
Read again. And the great and the and the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent. The Bible calls the great red dragon, which America extends from, that old serpent. The same seductive, seducing spirit, subtle spirit that was in the garden deceiving the black woman in the garden deceives them even so now in America. Whether it be Europe, whether it be America, anywhere you find Europeans, primarily Europeans, the black woman is deceived into believing she has power over men or equal to men. Nowhere else do you find that. In Egypt, you don't find that. China, you don't find that. Arabia, you don't find that. Iraq, you don't find that. If you do find it, they get put to death. Go ahead. Call the devil. Called what? The devil. Meaning the deceiver. Go ahead. And Satan. Meaning he, the, meaning the adversary. Whatever God says to do, he is adverse. Mm. Whatever God, order God sets up, he is adverse to it. Man should be with woman. No, man should be with man. Woman should be with man. No, woman should be with woman. That's adverse. The adversary. Adverse. Go ahead. Satan. Go ahead. Which deceiveth the whole world. Into believing what? <laughs> Christianity. Feminism. Emasculation. Um, role reversal. White Jesus. False gospel. That's deceiving the whole world. Her policies, her politics, her fashion creeps in. That's also deception of the whole world. Go ahead. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with and him. His allies lost with him. When the world war, when the Lord returns, it's going to be a war, and the devil is going to lose. Now, let's get Malcolm Ma Ma X real quick. Now you're, okay. The soundboard is nervous over there. That's all right. We're we, we, we going to be all right. They're going to be all right. Give me the Malcolm X video, YouTube. We're gonna we're gonna stop it at one thirty five. I think we, we need to have this controlled by ourselves. yeah ourselves, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Malcolm, Malcolm X. They said we do it. We get current. We get yelled at. We don't do it. We get yelled at. He said I don't want to do. He can't win. What do I do? We're gonna stop it. We're gonna stop at one thirty five. Is Abby yell over there? <laughs> oh. Hey. oh man, Abby yells over Damn. here too. You see, you see in the spirit. Oh, man. We're gonna, this is Malcolm X, the old interview with Malcolm X with, an, with another brother, another brother. Okay, we're gonna stop at 135. Watch what he says. Well, number one, he teaches us that uh, that never was a real serpent. It was not a real serpent that went into the God. What was it? But as you know, the Bible is written in symbols and parables, and this serpent or snake is a symbol that's used to hide the real identity of the one whom that actually was. Pause it. So he's, so he's telling you that the serpent in the garden was not an actual snake, but the Bible's written in a metaphor to hide who the serpent in the garden really was. He's going to show you who the, the serpent in the garden actually was. Even he knew this. Continue. The white man. We go back. Rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind it. Rewind it. Go to the beginning. Go to the very beginning. Stop. Go ahead. Now, now what does he mean there? Well, number one, he teaches us that uh, that never was a real serpent. It was not a real serpent that went into the God. What was it? But as you know, the Bible is written in symbols and parables, and this serpent or snake is a symbol that's used to hide the real identity of the one <laughs> whom that actually was. But who was it? The white man. It's Damn! This is the white man. He said the great the serpent is in fact was the white man yeah. the spirit of the white man was in the garden and that same spirit was on the earth today in physical form as the white man Malcolm was on, high, on a high level now remember the Israelites taught him that's, what they, that's why they're not teaching this now because he learned from the Israelites first okay prior to coming to the Islam so this understanding of the Bible was brought to him by Israelites first and foremost and then of course Islam added on to it but he's telling you metaphorically the snake in the garden was not really a snake that you see in cartoons. It was the spirit <coughs> of the so-called white man who was now physically on earth. Continue. This your standard teaching here. Yes. He teaches us that the black man by nature is divine. Pause. So they're taught that the black man by nature is divine. That's true. We are gods. But we die like men because of our sins. Continue. Now does this mean that the white man by nature is evil? By nature, he is other than divine. Pause. Damn. He said, by nature, the white man is other than divine. Damn. Go ahead. Well, now, does this mean he's evil? Can he do good? By nature, he is evil. He cannot do good. <laughs> History is best qualified to reward all research. And we don't have any historic uh, examples where we have found that they collectively, as a people, 
Oh, yes, sir. Very good. Do you teach them what you just said to me, that the white man is the king of the uh, yeah, You can go to any little Muslim child and ask him where is hell or who is the devil, and he wouldn't tell you that hell is down in the ground or that the devil is something invisible that, that you can't see. He'll tell you hell is right where he has been catching it, and he'll tell you who the one who is responsible for him uh, having received this hell is the devil. And he would say that this devil is a white man. Yes. Pause. So Malcolm understood that the white man is in fact the devil. And it's not out of racism. It's not based upon how he looks or our personal <laughs> hatred for him. But Malcolm, as I express as well, as we, the Bible expresses, is based upon his actions. There's devils in every race. But there is a superior race of devils that dominate all the other devils on the earth. That give us black and brown people hell every day. Hell is not underground on underground somewhere. It's on earth. Okay? That's what he's saying, and that's what the Bible says. So he's on point with that one. But he's making it clear that old serpent in the garden that deceived the woman back then is alive and well on earth today, deceiving her again. Bring it out. All and right? The greatest trick was Esau did it secretly behind the woman's back. So now, when she receives benefits, Section Eight, welfare, clothing, food, mm -hmm. you know, ch you know, support for her child, she looks at the white man as her savior, mm -hmm. as her great help, not knowing that the serpent, all the way back to, during the time of Eve, as well as the serpent during the nineteenth of uh, the twentieth century, has done the same thing, which is destroyed the black nucleus family, right. and that's the greatest trick. Of, that is the greatest power of the serpent is to keep the black man and black woman together, D right, divided, divided. I'm right. sorry, sorry, divided, right, and. If you look at it, for example, anytime we was doing good historically, during the time of Adam, the earth, Adam was prospering. Mm -hmm. He had a garden. Everything was going well. He had his wife under subject, uh, subjection. What a serpent says? No. He can't be doing good. No. He's over me right now. No. He can't have power over me. Mm -hmm. What I do? Let me break up the black nucleus family. Mm -hmm. Just like when you go during the time of the 20s, 1920s. You have Tulsa, Oklahoma. You have Chicago. You have D.C. You Detroit. have Central Park in, um, in um, uh, Manhattan. Detroit, you Florida. Have Detroit, Florida, Atlanta. Atlanta. Mm -hmm. These were great, thriving black um, Wall Streets. Mm -hmm. or black, yeah, we have black entrepreneurs. We have black churches. We, mm -hmm. have, you know, we have black economics. At that time, black businesses or black communities were thriving beyond belief and we have wealth we acquired wealth even in black wall street where the money circulated over what 300 or something towns yeah before it went out to the other community what happened the serpent had to come he had to conquer and divide destroy anytime we're doing good they get the, the envy of them comes in and say you know what let's destroy what they have and mm -hmm. what do they implement afterwards Let's do, let's do conquer and divide the black nucleus family. Mm -hmm. Historically speaking, it's the they, same they, they devil doing the same thing. They just don't want that unity. The black they don't unity want it. is, black. is, is, is detrimental to them. Yep, right. that's what he to said. Jay, Hoover, Jay Hoover said the yeah. worst, the most dangerous thing is black <laughs> unity. Yeah. He didn't say black guns. He said black unity. Black unity that's right. the worst, most dangerous thing ever to be established. Now, of course, Coin Pro has been dismantled, or rather revised, under Operation Iron Fist. Okay, we, we know about you, but it's okay. You do, you do your worst, and God will do his worst. Mm -hmm. uh, Wikipedia, uh, women's suffrage movement. And for those of you simple asinine people on, on the comment board about, about um, making comments about me using Wikipedia, when you do a radio show, you use your sources, I'm going to use mine. <laughs> All right? In the, meantime, shut the, in the meantime, shut the hell up and just be an audience like it's supposed to be. That's right. And, take, and just take notes. Oh, gosh. Uh, we're going to stop at... Uh, we're going to stop at women's Christian. We're going to stop at movement. Let's read from the top. We got to go a little fast now. A lack of time. This will be a part two to this. Go ahead. Oh, I got 20 minutes. All right, perfect. Go ahead. We got to keep that thing there so I can keep track of it. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Women's suffrage. Go ahead. Who's going to read? Cat Joel. Well, Cat, where you at, man? Okay. You know, you know, <laughs> I forgot. I mean, shoot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect timing. Oh, oh, oh. oh, oh. oh. Perfect timing, perfect timing. Please, please read for us. Thank I'll you, Captain. All of you. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, Captain. We appreciate you. Go ahead. Women's suffrage in the United States. Women's suffrage in the United States of America, the legal right of women to vote, was established over the course of more than a half a century, first in various states and localities, sometimes on a limited basis, and then nationality in 1920. Nationally, Nationally in 1920. We started in Europe. Go ahead. 
The demand for women's suffrage began to gather strength in the 19, in the 1840s, emerging from the broader movement for women's rights. So it grew in the 1940s. Go ahead. In 1848, the Seneca Falls Convention, the first women's rights convention, passed a resolution in favor of women's suffrage despite opposition from some of its organizers. Right, 1840s is when it started. Go ahead. Who believe the idea was too strange. By the time of the National Women's Rights Convention in 1850, however, suffrage was becoming an increasingly important aspect of the movement's activities. Mm -hmm. The first national suffrage organizations were established in 1869 when two competing organizations were formed, one led by Susan B. Anthony and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Elizabeth Cady Stanton, go ahead. So you got Susan B. Anthony. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, go ahead. And the other by Lucy Stone. And that's the third. These are the four mothers of feminism and Lucy Stone. And the fourth would be Amelia Bloomer. Go ahead. After years of rivalry, they merged in 1890 as the National American Women's Suffrage Association, uh -huh. NAWSA, with Anthony as its leading force. The Women's Christian Temperance Union. The w Women's what? Christian Temperance Union. The Women's Christian Temperance Union, WCTU, is involved in the feminist movement. Christianity and feminism go hand in hand. That's why in the Christian church, you be seeing women dominating the men. <coughs> Who do you see dragging these kids to the church? Grandmas and mothers. Mm -hmm. But there's no man present. And they worship in a white Jesus. Go ahead. Which was the largest women's organization at the time. Was established in 1873 and also pursued women's suffrage. Giving a huge boost to the movement. Giving a huge boost to that's what I wanted. Now let's go click on um what's that? What's that? Uh let's go to feminist movement now. Wikipedia, feminist movement. We're gonna read we're gonna read um mm, the first and second paragraph. Oh yeah, oh, come on, come on. Feminist movement. The feminist movement, also known as the women's movement, or simply feminism. Oh, simply what? Feminism. Feminism, go ahead. Refers to a series of political campaigns for reforms on issues such as reproductive rights. Reproductive rights goes into the abortions. That should that eventually, because at first it was going into them mutilating the genitals and so forth of our women, which is understandable. But then over time, it mutated into you can abort your child, kill your children, it went into, turned into that. And they pushed that, that, that uh, agenda into the black and brown women. Because white women were running around killing their babies like that. They pushed that agenda into the black woman. Go ahead. Domestic violence. See, so it, so it had its pros and cons, but over time, it, it, it mutated into the homosexual agenda. Watch this, go ahead. Maternity leave. So, so maternity leave came from this. Go ahead. Equal pay. Equal pay. Women's suffrage. Sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. And sexual violence. All of which fall under the label of feminism and the feminist movement. The movement's priorities vary among nations and communities. It ranged from opposition to female genital mutilation right. in one country to opposition to the glass ceiling in another. So it varies in different areas. Go ahead, in different countries. Go ahead. Feminism in parts of the Western world has gone through three waves. Goes through what? Three waves. Three waves of feminism. One through three waves. Go ahead. First wave feminism was oriented around the station of middle or upper class white women. That's who started it. Middle or upper class white women who complained about their men marginalizing them or making them wear like the dresses and big dresses. They wore loads upon because these white men were, were, were Christianity fanatics and they want the women to dress <laughs> all dressed down. Wherever they worked at, wherever they were, they had to dress down. So white women felt like they were being burdened or, or enslaved by their upper class, rich white husbands that owned slaves. So they felt like they were slaves to their husbands and they used that emotional agenda to to and, and push it into the ears of black women to go see we're slaves like you we're fighting for the same rights and they merge their complaints and the and and the and their slaves into one issue one mission like like blm does today right so same like, exact yeah. thing right doing using the same thing well i'm gonna show you guys keep going first wave feminism was oriented around the station of middle class or upper class white woman and involved suffrage and political equality Second wave feminism attempted to further combat social and cultural inequalities. Mm -hmm. Although the first wave of feminism involved mainly middle class white women. <laughs> involved mainly who? 
middle class white woman. That's who it was made by. Go ahead. The second wave brought in women of color. Ah, why? For numbers. To gain numbers. Because they, 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 was, they were write petitions. They, they needed more, more of a, po to make them uh, more population, a larger population. They needed to use the black woman as what? As uh, numbers. To further push their petition to the white man to push for equality. Not for the black woman, but for themselves. Then they, then they deceive you black women into believing that that movement was for you. Meanwhile, they, they're with their husbands or run your, run your men. Your husbands are sharecropping. Your husbands have no human rights at all during this time. Right. They were considered human during this time. But you fighting for, they, they use the colored women, like Harriet Tubman, for example. They, you, they, they used her and many other black women, unsuspecting black women, to push their agenda of equality with their white men. And they're doing it again today. The feminist movement also preyed on the Stockholm syndrome that our yes, women was facing. Yes, yep. Because in our oppression, they was always thriving for that equality with the with the heathen. Mm -hmm. They wanted to be like the white women. They wanted to straighten their hair. So they right. figure if I jump in this cause, I'll be equal. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And it helped the black man. Go ahead. Second wave feminism attempted to further combat social and cultural inequalities. Although the first wave of feminism involved mainly middle class white women, the second wave brought in women of color and women from other developing nations that were seeking solidarity. Go ahead. Third wave feminism is continuing to address the financial, social, and cultural inequalities, includes renewed campaigning. For greater influence of women in politics and the media. In the media. Watch this. Dick, and the crazy thing is, how could a, the black woman join a movement for, e, um, so, for gender equality when a black man didn't have gender equality? Right. He had equality amongst the white men. See that little logo right there? We can do it. <laughs> we can do it too. That's the little 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 um mascot there. Go ahead. So the white woman, the black woman left. The black man says, "You know what? Because you can't get equality, I'm gonna go join the other side and get, and get equality right. Self myself. Selfish, selfish, right? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. Uh, okay. In real, okay. For, where am I? The fourth wave now. Fourth wave feminism examines the interlocking systems of power that contribute to the stratification of traditionally marginalized groups. Click that, please. It's the fourth wave. Watch that. Click marginalized groups. No, no, no. Go down. Click marginalized groups. You click that. Yep. Who does that pertain to? The fourth wave. Read the first paragraph. Come on, come on, come on. The first paragraph. Social exclusion, marginalization, or social marginalization. And is the social disadvantage and a relegation to the fringe of society. It is a term used widely in Europe and was first used in France. It is used across disciplines, including... Go up, go up, go up, go up. It's not a one one all that stuff. Go up. It mentions LGBT. Go slowly. Go slow. Go, no, not that far. It's on the top. Go slowly. Right there. Read that, sir. Right there. Read it right there. Right there. Uh, okay. Right where it says um, such exclusionary. Yes. Well, read the, the top. Let's say on top. That Alienation. Okay. Yeah. Alienation or dis disenfranchisement and resulted from social exclusion? Right, it's, it's, it's a marginalized groups. These are social ex socially excluded groups. That's this the fourth the fourth thing of feminism is fighting against socially marginalized groups. So it's going to explain to you these marginalized groups that the feminism defends now. Watch. Resulted from social exclusion can be connected to a person's social class, mm -hmm. race, skin color, religious affiliation, ethnic origin, Educational status, childhood relationships, living standards, and or political opinions and appearance. Come on. Sec such exclusionary forms of discrimination may also apply to people with d a disability, minorities, LGBTQ plus ah, people, uh -huh. plus. drug users, institutional care leavers. So, go ahead. The elderly and the young. So all that's fluff. That's the main one is LGBTQ. Right. The okay. fourth way of feminism is supporting that. Plus, plus goes into pedophiles. That's what I was. Plus about to goes say. into bestiality. What the hell plus mean? Plus means ped plus goes into all that. Per pederasty. Right. Pedophile. That's going into that next. Okay. Y'all opening Pandora's box. This gay stuff. Opening Pandora's box. So you ain't seen nothing come. yet.
I'm glad I'm sorry. Yeah. He said, they said more is coming. Right. Plus, plus means there's more to there's come. More plus to come. means to be continued. They're, they're saying that we haven't thought of all the evil in our well, mind yeah, yet. We got more. We got more. We got more well, stuff that we're going to bring out. <laughs> you haven't seen nothing yet. Well, you ain't Shoot. seen nothing. Love is love, right? Yeah, yeah love shoot. is love. I love animals. Next year, I'm going to marry a dog, damn it. Next year, I'm going to marry a pigeon. Yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, damn, Dean. Marry a pigeon next year. Damn, Dean with a pigeon. What the hell you going to do for a pigeon? That means she loves me. She said, she said, <laughs> oh damn! Crazy ass people. Go to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 is that uh, is the pigeon metaphorical for a, a uh, tribe? No, 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 it's not. Oh god! Oh, how, how do you go to that? How, how do you go? How do you go to that? God. Wow, man! I'm sorry. Go, go to history, please. Go to history, please. I don't know how I translated to that. I'm sorry. Go to history. I'm not talking about them. Uh, I'm sorry. Go to, <laughs> no, gosh, this guy, man. Go to history. Um, go down for history hey, li- in the hey, same link. Li- li- no, no. You know what? Go back to feminist movement. Go back to that feminist movement. Go to history. At least I didn't say anything about Levi today. Oh man! All okay, go to, go, to, go to history. <laughs> <laughs> go to history and feminist movement history section. We're gonna stop at um platforms. History. Yeah, right there. Click that. It should take you there, right? Okay, stop the platforms. Go ahead. <coughs> feminist. <clears throat> Come on. Come on now. Feminist movement in Western society. Feminism in the United States, Canada, and a number of countries in Western Europe has been divided into three waves by feminist scholars. Mm -hmm. First, second, and third wave feminism. Recent early 2010s, research suggests that there, sorry, research suggests there may be a fourth wave characterized in part by new media platforms. By new media platforms, Black Lives Matter. New media platforms, they got the big the BLM all in the written the streets now. It's everywhere, all over the social media. Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, it's political agenda. That is a suggest is the fourth wave. It is a we're in the fourth wave. We are in the fourth wave of feminism, pushing the revolt reversal, transgenderism, homosexuality, bestiality, pedophilia, all that is all in the fourth wave. The fourth wave was LGBTQ right. plus plus the continuation. Yeah. Right. And ageism. <clears throat> Okay? And destroying the black family. Removing the father out the household. Black fathers especially. Go to Susan B. Anthony now. So, Mosai set the things up for us to clearly see. Like, when he says we are the salt of the earth. Mm -hmm. Even the wickedness that Esau does, they still need to use us. Yep. And everything they do, they need to use us. Yep, everything. Success, evil, oppression, they're still using us. Mm-hmm. Still using us. Uh, oh, even in death, they use us. Yep. Because yep. the whole El- the whole BLM is the tro- George Floyd was a, tro- was a Trojan horse to push the LGBTQ plus agenda hmm. in the black and brown community. They don't give a damn about George Floyd. Because black folks tell them black folks all throughout Detroit recently, all throughout Chicago recently, all throughout Atlanta recently, and BLM was nowhere to be found. Yep. Y'all are full of SH. Susan B. Anthony, please. Susan B. Anthony, Wikipedia. <clears throat> We're going to end at close friends. Susan B. Anthony. Look for Susan B. Anthony. We're going to stop back uh, at close friends. We're a little faster. We got six, a few minutes left. Yes, Come sir. On. Susan B. Anthony, February 15th, 1820, March 8th, 13th, 1906, was an American social reformer and women's rights activist who played a pivotal role in the women's suffrage movement. Mm-hmm. Born in a Quaker family committed to social equality, she collected anti-slavery petitions. She did what? She collected anti-slavery petitions. Stop. She collected anti-slavery petitions. That's them taking black situations and merging it into their own. Feminism. Mm. That's where it started from. That's why I mean. It's they added colored women later on. They're using black people's situations to say, see, we're slaves too. Let's make our agendas one. Because women, she's a middle class white woman or upper class white woman fighting for equality with their man and we won't even consider men at all during this time. So they're using the black agenda to push feminism. It's nothing new. It's been done before. Go ahead. Come on. Anti-slavery petitions at the age of 17. Uh-huh. In 1856, she became the New York State agent 
for the American Anti-Slavery Society. See, part, correct themselves to black, to, um, black situation. Now, some of y'all may say, well, maybe she was really an advocate for, for freeing slaves. <laughs> Whether she was or not, it's irrelevant because at the end of the day, they, they, they used a situation that was two, just two separate situations. She's an upper class, middle class white woman fighting for equality with her man and, and she wasn't, she wasn't, and, and then meanwhile at the same time, she's they're adding black women as numbers to push their own agenda. It's the same thing. Don't fall for the nonsense. You got to read between the lines. What Susan B. Anthony did back then by incorporating black women to the women's suffrage movement is what Gloria Steinem yes, did in that. the 1960s. She yep. did the same thing. With Miss Magazine. Yep. Well, she, she posed as a journalist, but under, underhandedly, she was a CIA operative mm -hmm. that was meant to infiltrate the black civil rights movement during mm -hmm. the 1960s to break up the black nucleus family mm -hmm. and then further the white agenda to further destroy the black agenda. Then she lied and said she learned, she learned feminism from black women. Mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Sit Whole down. mouth. Get the hell out of here. Go ahead. All right. So in 1851, she met Elizabeth Caddy Stanton, mm -hmm. who became her lifelong friend and co-worker in social reform activities, mm -hmm. primarily in the field of women's right. Mm -hmm. In 1852, they founded a New York woman's state, Temperance Society, after Anthony was prevented from speaking at a temperance conference because she was female. Right, Christian temperance conference. Con <coughs> a Christian temperance thing. Go ahead. Because she was female. Go ahead. In 1863, they founded the Women's Loyal National League. 1863, we were still slaves. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which con conducted the largest petition drive in United States history up to that time, collecting nearly 400,000 signatures in support of the abolition of slavery. See? Trying to include the boat, mixing them together. Go ahead. In 1866, they initiated the American Equal Rights Association, which campaigned for equal rights for both women and African Americans. In 1868, they began publishing a women's rights newspaper called The Revolution. In 1869, they founded a National Women's Suffrage Association as a part of the split in the women's, mo women's movement. In 1890, the split was formally healed when their organization merged with the rival American Women's Suffrage Association to form the National American Women's Suffrage Association, with Anthony as its key force. In 1876, Anthony was Stanton began working with the Matt, Ma Matilda, what is that thing? Matilda, Matilda. Oh, Matilda yes. Jocelyn Cage on what eventually grew into the sixth volume. History of Women's Suffrage. The interests of Anthony and Stanton diverged somewhat in later years, but the two remained close friends. Go down, go to jump down. This is uh, when she. It's going to say when she. Go down, when she, right there. We're going to end at a dollar coin. When she first began campaigning for women's rights, Anthony was harshly ridiculed and accused of trying to destroy the institution of marriage. Trying to do what? Destroy the institution of marriage. See? The white man caught Dang. on to what she was doing. Wow. Damn. The white man caught on to what she was doing. Read on. Go ahead. Public perception of her changed radically during the, her lifetime. Because, because they started gaining more power over time. World War I took place. World War II took place. Go ahead. However... Her 80th birthday was celebrated in the White House at the invitation of President William McKinley. She became the first female citizen to be depicted on U.S. coinage when her portrait appeared on a 1979 dollar click coin. Click that coin, please. Man. What's that coin symbolize? Click the coin. Click the coin. Come on. Click it. Click it. We can all see it. Okay, that's the front of the coin. Get this at the back of the coin. Ah, click that. So that's the. I want you to blow up the um the other side. So that's Susan B. Anthony's face there. But look on the other side of the coin. You see a, You see the Earth in the background and the eagle on the moon. Mm. 1979 issued coin, symbolizing them <laughs> arriving on the moon. The symbol of rebellion. Women rebelling against the man and Esau rebelling against God. Damn. Got the eagle. Got the eagle on the moon and the Earth in the background. 1979 <laughs> coin. Two prophecies being uh, implemented. Then they were saying, well, you know, this coin's too close to the quarter, so let's get rid of it. They got discontinued because it was too, like, apparently it was too close to looking like a quarter. So, but the reason why is because people start, the, the two start to spread around this same year. Right. They said, get rid of that coin. Right. Because that coin symbolizes what? Obadiah chapter 1. Right. And Deacon. Obadiah chapter 1 and Jeremiah chapter 31. And four, yeah, Jeremiah 31. 31, 22, I believe. Right. And What's Jeremiah 49. And woman shall surpass a man. Right. Compass, woman shall surpass, surpass a man. Surpass a man. Yep. Jeremiah 31, 22. So, yep. so the coin is showing two prophetic events occurring at the same, same time. Same time. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. Isaiah 3, 312. Yeah, Isaiah 312 also. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go to let's go to um the biography. Go back to her again. We're gonna stop at we're gonna stop at was early social activism. Go down to her bi biography. Go down. <laughs> get, out, get out of this. Go back, go back, go back. Go to Susan B. Anthony again. Okay, go down to her biography. Click biography right there. Go back up, click biography, right down top. Click that. We're gonna stop at um her husband, own husband. It should say early social activism. Susan Anthony. No, it should say early social activism over. Go down. Right, I gotta look for it. They gotta look for it. Scroll down. Early social activism. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's in bold letters over it. This is a lot. I'm I'm cutting cutting through it. Right there. Right mm -hmm. there. Stop there. We're gonna stop at um own husband. Early social activism. Anthony embarked on her career of social reform with energy and determination. Schooling herself in reform issues, she found herself drawn to the more radical ideas of people like William Lloyd Garrison, George Thompson, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Uh -huh. Soon she was wearing the controversial bloomer dress. She was wearing what? The controversial bloomer dress. Soon she was wearing the controversial bloomer dress. That's a milliliter bloomer. She made female pants. She wore that to symbolize the equality with men. She wore the controversial bloomer dress. Go ahead, watch this. Consistent of plantoons? Pantaloons. Consisting of pantaloons. Go ahead. Pantalon. Pantalones. Pantaloon, go ahead. Worn under a knee length dress. Wore un worn under a knee length. She wore pants under the dress. Symbolizing role reversal of the man and woman. See that? Go ahead. Although she felt it was more sensible than the traditional heavy dresses that dragged the ground. Because their men made them wear that, based upon Christianity tradition. Go ahead. She reluctantly quit wearing it after a year because it gave her opponents the opportunity to focus on her apparel rather than her ideas. By her being, they, they, they didn't care what she was saying because she was dressed out of order. <laughs> they don't want to hear what she was saying. You wearing pants. We you, you, you listen to you. You got a damn thing to say. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Partnership with Elizabeth Cady Stanton. In 1851, Anthony was introduced to Elizabeth Cady Stanton, mm -hmm. who had been one of the organizers of the Seneca, Seneca Falls Convention and had introduced a controversial resolution and support. No, you skipped them. Go back. You're going too fast. Go I back. Want, this sorry. Is her class. I'm go back up. I don't want all of that. No, go back up. You skipped. Go back up. Go back, go back up. Go back up. It says her um, this dragged to the, to the ground. Is that it? I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep going. I mentioned her husband. I'm sorry. Keep going. Keep going. I don't know why I'm. Wait, where? Katie Stanton, you stop, you okay, stop there. I'm trying, I thought I missed it. Go ahead, go ahead I'm sorry. Oh, slow down. Yes, uh, no, this, yeah, keep going. Okay. I'm sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Keep going. In 1851, Anthony was introduced to, to Elizabeth Cady Stanton, uh -huh. who had been one of the organizers of the Seneca Falls Convention uh -huh. and had introduced the con controversial resolution in support of women's suffrage. Uh -huh. Anthony and Stanton were introduced by Amelia Bloomer. There you go. Amelia Bloomer introduced them. These are the four mothers of feminism. Amelia Bloomer, Lucy Stone, Katie Stanton, and Susan B. Anthony. Go ahead. A feminist and a mutual acquaintance who had not signed a declaration of sentiments and subsequent resolution despite her attendance at the Seneca Falls Convention. Uh -huh. Anthony and Stanton soon became close friends uh -huh. and workers, forming a relationship that was pivotal for them and for the women's movement as a whole. Go ahead, watch this. After the Stanton's move from Seneca Falls to New York City in 1861, a room was set aside for Anthony in every house they lived in. One of Stanton's biographers estimated that over her lifetime, Stanton spent more time with Anthony than with any other adult, including her own husband. Mm. Mm. Spent more time with that woman than her own husband. You do the math. I'll leave you alone. I'll leave that alone. Mm. I know what that sounds like. That's, that, tra that translates into after a while. And what... We one, one point I want to bring out uh, um, during, like I said, the, the first wave of feminism, you see that Amelia Bloomberg um, introduced Bloomberg pants. Bloomers, right. Bloomers. Oh, bloomers. The Bloomers, right. which are pantaloons. Mm -hmm. but the second wave of feminism commercialized pants on the scene in the 1960s. Mm -hmm. That's when it's actually. I love pushed. Lucy and all that yep. stuff. I love Lucy, yeah, things right, like yeah. that. So he's showing you that Esau implements things in, dr uh, in waves. Mm -hmm. First wave, okay, I'm going to introduce the idea. Now, it wasn't that. Now, the men didn't take that. They said they didn't accept that. But it was just like I said, to desensitize us. They introduced things in waves. I'm, okay, I'm going to put a little bit here. All right, pull back a little bit. Mm -hmm. like they, they, they used the concepts, flex a little bit. Mm -hmm. And in the 1960s, all right, now we're going to commercialize it. That mm -hmm. feminism is growing in strength. Mm -hmm. You got the black woman now. Now we could further push it. Yep. 
It's a program programming. Yeah, um, that's the one and one. You ain't got much time. We ain't gonna finish this, but we gonna just get we can. That's the one and one. The book of Esther, chapter one, verse one. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahasuerus. This is Ahasuerus, which reigned from India even unto Ethiopia. This is the man you meet about, known as the movie Three Hundred. His name is Xerxes. Xerxes, King Xerxes of the Persian Empire. Go ahead. Over 107 and 20 provinces. Mm -hmm. Then that in those days when the king of Ahasuerus sat on the throne of his kingdom, which was in Shushan, the palace. In the third year of his reign, he made a feast unto all his princes and his servants. The power of Persia and Media, the nobles and princes of the provinces being before him. Now jump to verse 10. Verse 10. No, verse uh, eight, um, verse 9. Verse 9. Also, Vasti, the queen, made a feast for the women in the royal house. So he made a feast, the king, and the queen made a feast. And she made a feast for women. His wife, Vashti, made a feast for the women. Go ahead. Which belonged to the king, Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehaman, Bista, Harbana, Bigta, and Ag Abagatha, Zatha, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the, pre the presence of Ahasuerus, the king, to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal. To show the people and the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look up. Cause she was up. bad, she was fine. So he said, "I want you, I want, I want you to come out here and show you how pretty you are to my to my um comrades here." Go ahead. But the queen vastly refused. She to said, come. "No, I'm not coming out there. I'm, I don't want to." Go ahead. To come at the king's commandment by his chamberlains. Therefore, was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. He was pissed off. Go ahead. <clears throat> then the king said to the wise men, which knew the times, for so was the king's manner to all that knew law and judgment. And the next and the next unto him was Kashina, Shatha, Amatha, Tarshish, Miras, Miras, and Marsana, and Mimakin, the seven princes of Persia and the media. His advisors, go ahead. Which saw the king's face and which sat and which sat the first in the kingdom. So how mad he was. Go ahead. What shall we do unto Queen Vashti according to according to law? Because she have not performed the commandment of the king of Hazars by the chamberlain. What should we do with this woman? She just, she just, she just dissed the king. What should we do with her? Go ahead. And Mimikon answered before the king and the pr princes, Vashti the queen have not done wrong to the king only, mm. but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provinces by, of the king of Hazar. By her actions, not only did she disrespect the king, but she set an example for disrespect of the women throughout all the kingdom. She set a bad example. Go ahead, watch this. Verse 17. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women, so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes. When it shall be reported, the king of Hazaras commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. So we let this thing go unpunished. It'll set the example that all the women in the kingdom can disrespect their husbands as the queen disrespected the king. Go ahead. Likewise, shall the ladies of Persia and Media say this day unto all the king's princes, which have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. There will arise feminism in the kingdom. Go ahead. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered, that Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. Get rid of her. <coughs> Get rid of this woman. Find your new wife. Go ahead. Verse 20. And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall go shall give to their husband honor, both to, both to great and small. Those rich and poor, they shall, their wives will honor them based upon the actions of the king. Against his rebellious wife. Go ahead. And the saying pleased the king and the princes. And the king did according to the word of Mimikin. Watch this verse. 22 is my, my favorite verse. Watch this. For he sent letters into for he sent letters into all the king provinces, into every province, according to the writing thereof, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house. Every man should bear rule in his house over his woman. Go ahead. And that it should be published according to the language of every people. And every man in it while his kingdom is commanded to have their house in order, including the king himself. So this Persian king shut feminism down. That's right. That's right. Shut it down. All right, so we're going to end on that as part one. Hope I got something out of this. I'm going to continue part two next week. All right? All praise so, to um, got any announcements? You want to say something? Um, all praise to the Most High. Um, support us, support us, support us, um, Israel. Make sure you like, comment, and share. Share this and spread the word. Spread the word that, like I said. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Real yes, quick. Sir. Show the images of the books from the first episode real fast. I showed y'all. I got a few seconds left, right? 
no, no, no. Yeah, I'm gonna show them real quick. The no, books. I, I, I promise y'all, I'll share the books Shoot. that I used last on um, my first episode. The first book is this right here. Come on, come on. I got much time. Oh, snap. That's the first one right there. Blow it up so we can see it. That's the picture of us in Egypt. That's called Pictorial History of Israel. Okay, that's the first book I used. Next one. I got four seconds. It's gonna cut off, right? Yeah, it's gonna cut off. I gotta get the. Yeah, we'll, we'll do it next week, D. All right. Yeah, we'll do it next week. All right. Hey, look, we got an announcement. All right. Yo, Tab, all right. It's gonna be all right. <laughs> I can get paid tomorrow. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> get paid tomorrow. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. All praise to the Most High. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna show them books, man. <laughs> yeah, you can show them next week after I get them. Oh, I'll be good, man. Listen, nobody gets them until I get them. That's the rule of thumb. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so oh, the master man. paid me tomorrow. <laughs> I was good. I can get books too. Oh, so man. yeah, so support <laughs> our his, our hidden history show. <sighs> Um, like I said, if you want to donate um, to our Hidden History show, as you can see, none of this is free. Um, you want better pixels, you want better quality, support us so we can update um, and present it to you um, even better. So you can donate to iuic.newjersey at israelunite.org. Put it in the description box. Um, donation for our history um, radio show. Um, like I said, um, also, if you want to donate to the Booster Club, donate to iuic.fundraising at israelunite.org. iuic.fundraising at israelunite.org. Support this truth. Support the troops. All right? All right. Anything else? Nope. Uh, yeah, so Lord's World next week, I'll, I'll make sure I picked up the books I, I, I bought out. The first episode, for, I showed you one. I got three more to show y'all. Four more, and that's it. All right? Cap will be happy. He will have them by that time. I'll be good, baby. Or not. Oh, oh no, hey. no, no, no. I will be good. He will have them. All right. Oh, so, yes. Shalom. Hey, quick, quick shout out to Officer Ariel from D.C. and Sister Shay. That's bringing uh, uh, <laughs> the kingdom to pass with a righteous marriage. Yes, yes, so yes. Shout yes, out to yes. them. Shout out to them. Shout out to them. Yes, them yes. Also, we like to us. shout out the brothers behind oh, the yes. scenes. Oh, yes. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> what the heck was that? All of that was. So they, they, they did it again with the sound effects. Go ahead. Oh gosh. Go ahead. Somebody yeah. from that thing. Yeah, I gotta get fired. I gotta get yeah, fired. Somebody for put that. a go Southern Kingdom brother yeah. there. You know, fired up. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Yes. Also, we like to shout out the brothers behind the scenes. On um, the brothers that make this. You know, the the brother in the IT. You know, you have um also Yosef came down from far. You know. You know, to help assist us. Yes. You know, all praise to the most high. Thank you very much. We appreciate you, brother. Please, please don't leave again. Please don't leave yes, us again. You know, um, you know, and all the other brothers from Philly. You know, we got um uh, Icon so Pete. Cool. Remember, um, sister, support him too. He's single. He's oh, single. Gosh. And they put the camera on my man Icon Pete right now. No, Icon Pete, man. That's the black ball, man. That's the purest mole we have right black now. Beautiful brother right there. There's a black <laughs> mole right there. Man. I can't so, support the troops as well as support the brother, the single brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Genesis 2 is not good for black man to be alone. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good for man to be alone. So support my brother right there. You know? Um, yes, also we'd like to thank <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, look at that smile. Uh, my man get all right, my man I can't be. <laughs> the whitest feet. Oh, they got the hair. Uh, <laughs> also, oh, also, like I said, we like to thank the sisters um that get up every morning to supply us with our food. We love it. Um thank you for your support, sisters. Yes, very we, much. we 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 really appreciate it. All right. Anybody anything else? No, that's it. A great class dig. All well, praises to the most high, man. Yes, sir. Uh, Israel says shalom. Most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless. Most high Christ bless.